Hi, this is David Oman with House at the End of the Drive.com. You're listening to KTLK, The Fringe FM. So, you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on, 24-7, with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online, or on mobile with any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. Live for three hours every Saturday night. It's a show that engages the mind, makes you think, and maybe even challenge what you think you know. Hi, I'm Jeremy Scott of Into the Parabnormal, where we talk about topics that are anything but mainstream, somewhere between abnormal and paranormal. Bring an open mind and join us for Into the Parabnormal. Live Saturdays at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern on The Fringe FM. Hi, Jeremy Scott here from Into the Power of Normal, and I'm back live Saturdays at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern, right here on The Fringe FM. Who were the real ancient Egyptians? What is it about ancient Egypt that captivates us all? The critically acclaimed series Magical Egypt is back with all new episodes. Let Chance Gardner and company take you on another adventure through Magical Egypt in the new series Magical Egypt 2. Magical Egypt 2 attempts a forensic reconstruction of the science of the ancients through a study of ancient aesthetics. Also, the best researchers and authors in the field like John Anthony West, Graham Hancock, Laird Scranton, Robert Duvall, Lon Mao Duquette, Aaron Sheik, and more join together to explore the topics of the esoteric and the hidden messages of the ancient Egyptians. Just go to MagicalEgypt.com right now and put in the code word FRINGE and get 10% off any download or order, including the groundbreaking original Magical Egypt series, as well as the new episodes in Magical Egypt 2. Also, check out the great work and the companion series at MagicalEgypt.com. Click the banner on the Fringe FM or go to MagicalEgypt.com and use the code word FRINGE and get 10% off your order today while it lasts. We told you weeknights on the Fringe FM are now... Now even better. And we mean it. Do it live! Where else can you hear the best shows and the best talent? Kick off your evening with our newest host, Alex Exum, live at 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 Eastern. Hang out with me, Joe Roop, on Lighting the Void at 9 Pacific, Midnight Eastern. Ryan Gable expands your mind on the secret teachings at Midnight Pacific, 3 a.m. Eastern. We're bringing the heat every single night. Fire it up. The Fringe FM. This is Paranormal News. I'm John G. Welcome to Space Unity. Private industry is one step closer to commercial flights to space. Virgin Galactic's tourism spaceship traveled across the boundary of space high above California's Mojave Desert on Thursday. It reached an altitude of 51 miles before making its descent back to Earth. The supersonic spaceship reached Mach 2.9, nearly three times the speed of sound, while founder Richard Branson watched from the ground. It's been 14 long years, um, 800 brilliant engineers, uh, brave test pilots um, that have got us this far. Branson says one day he'll get on board before Virgin Galactic begins its commercial flights, transporting six passengers on the rocket to and from space. Jaffe Pace, million dollar view. More than 600 people have signed up for as much as $250,000 a pop. The Voyager 2 spacecraft is now traveling in interstellar space. NASA has traveled into interstellar space for only the second time ever. The Voyager 2 probe left the protective bubble of particles and magnetic fields created by our sun, unlike its predecessor, Voyager 1, which entered interstellar space in 2012. Voyager 2 is carrying an instrument that will provide first-of-its-kind observations. Information moving at the speed of light takes about 16 hours to travel back to Earth. The probe, which launched in 1977, is now a little over 11 billion miles from Earth. Voyager 2 is NASA's longest-running mission. Well, this is just contributes to the number of discoveries that Voyager has been making, and this is one we'd hoped we would have the chance to do. And fortunately, the supposed spacecraft were still operating when they reached interstellar space. It's really quite, you know, quite remarkable. Connect with the news at ParabnormalRadio.com. I'm John Jeter, Paranormal News. Fire 
Good evening. I'm Joe Roop, and this is Lighting the Void. We are live on KTLK Digital Broadcasting, The Fringe FM, and our website is lightingthevoid.com. The phone lines are open all night if you want to call in. That call in number is 1 800 588 0335. Our text in number is 501 777 5631 if you want to call into the show. And uh, tonight I wanted to discuss. A few things, but first I'd like to thank you all for your support. Uh, when I put out that message on Facebook about my grandmother, you got to understand that not having a mother growing up, and I'm sure some of you understand that your grandmother kind of steps in, and she was always that person for me. And seeing her lay there in that bed is very, very hard. And so I've been back and forth to the hospital, and I've seen all of your messages, and thank you guys so much. Also, I want to thank. Uh, you know, Barbara and uh, Edward and a few of you have donated uh, from the bottom of my heart. Thank you guys so much. I know it's tough during the holidays, but, um, yeah, I really want to say thanks. And um, tonight, this is I wanted to discuss what it means to be a void walker because I didn't just name the show for some reason that it's uh, unapparent because it sounded cool or it was, it was a song name or... You know, it was marketable or it was clickbait or it came up in a search engine. It's really something that I, I thought about because you go around and you listen to a lot of shows. And I've always been jealous of those people that speak with supreme confidence as if they know what they're saying all the time. I mean, Art Bell was uh, somebody I followed because of his curious nature. But now you you go around and you hear a lot of everybody's opinions and they justify their opinions and it sounds really good and they even take phone calls and they argue with people and it's entertaining i mean i still listen to alex jones for entertainment sometimes but i got to thinking about the holidays and being at the hospital watching all of the uh the medical staff do everything in their power using what they what they learned was science the science that they learned to take care of a human when certain symptoms happen and it's pretty incredible to watch it all go down and but it also made me think about the holidays and then the holidays made me think about christmas and of course i got to thinking about polarity again so i wanted to discuss you know the entire polar debate first of science versus religion and in the uh, virtual shack with me tonight is the reverend dan lopez Thank you so much, Dan, for coming on. I got to have somebody to bounce this stuff off of or yell at me when I talk too much. So thanks for coming in, brother. <laughs> You're welcome, Joe. Thank you. And so I wanted to talk about this. I mean, science believes in what's measured and quantified. And the super religious, a lot of times they just want to throw science out the door. But here's the thing. Um, I believe both of these are pretty valid. And I learned this from good old Frater Xavier because simply they're just polar opposites, polar opposites of the same thing. Now, this is a real important time of the year for all of us because we we're either celebrating Christmas or Hanukkah or whatever or the solstice, whatever religion you are. 
but you're also seeing the cycles of the planet. So I wanted to talk about this thing because I've had my own experiences with it. And and you yourself, uh, do you believe in religion? Are you one of these total religious people? Are you a total science nut? And you'll just go up against religion all day long? They got YouTube videos of this stuff of people just going at each other. And I was watching this last night. It made me think about it. But have you ever found yourself in this argument? Now, it's, I find myself in a different place. It's like my grandfather, who was a, a Christian all of his life. And he celebrated Christmas, and we would pray before each meal, and we always said a blessing before each meal. We wouldn't touch the food until prayer was over. And we said amen and all this stuff. But he was a um, a truth seeker, too. And he's probably up there beside my grandmother right now at the hospital. He's always had a book in his hand. And as he was seeking the truth, he learned the nature of the New Testament and where it really came from, that a lot of it was pagan and a lot of it came from ancient Egypt. And what I found interesting was, is, is instead of embracing the teachings or even thinking about embracing the teachings, that instead of doing that, what he did was, is he took it all out so he no longer celebrates Christmas. He no longer says amen because of the connotations of the Egyptian names. And he took on a more Hebrew aspect of Christianity. Now, I found that really interesting because I thought it was really cool to see that my grandfather still seeking the truth in his older age. You know, some people just make their minds up and they live their life and that's cool. But not him. He kept digging and digging. And then when he found this out, and this is not too long ago, actually. What I was hoping for was that he would actually look into the ancient mystery teachings and think that maybe, just maybe they were a good thing, but instead he, he stuck to his guns and he came more, he became more, I guess you could say, Judaic in his thought and process of religion. Now that's okay, that's his choice, but I thought that was interesting. Um, and I also remember... When the movies came out, and I forget the name of the movie, Dan, you could probably help me here. What was the, the zeitgeist? It was something about where they finally revealed the teachings of Christ and the Christian mysteries, and they showed all of the different schools that had the same stuff in it. And boy, everybody was going at it over that online. Wasn't it called yeah, it was zeitgeist, zeitgeist or something? Yeah. Yeah, it was called zeitgeist. I'm talking forums of it, just Facebook chats and forums of stuff that went on and on and on. And I'm like, wow, you know, why can't they just embrace both sides? Now, when I talk about walking between two worlds, I don't just mean religion and science. I'm just using that as a supreme example of the two worlds that we could say a wise person, a wizard, a magician, a mystic, somebody that can understand these things walks between. So we think about this, right? The brain. It's extremely polar. Science relates to the logic side of the brain, the left side. Science tends to make things sometimes a little bit more complex than they need to be. We talked about high magic on this show. And high magicians, ceremonial magicians, we've discussed. Like last night, Nineveh Shadrach, we played the uh, flashback with Nineveh, who's a high magician. These types of magicians are left brain, believe it or not. You would think they're right brain, but I believe they're a little bit more left brain. It's actually called occult science when you study it. Someone who loves to take in lots of books and lots of information and they get real intellectual and analyze things, excuse me, analyze things to death. That's that's left hemisphere, logical side. But you got to understand if you're going to be performing things, I I think one-sided magic can hinder your magic. And I'm going to talk about that too cuz I know you guys They're sending me a lot of questions about this stuff. Now, religion kind of relates to the right side of the brain, the subconscious, the illogical side of the mind. Symbols, emotions, feelings, art, archetypes, color, smell. Uh, It's really obvious that these are not logical teachings, but it appeals to the right side of the brain. And this is where I go back to the story of my grandfather who discovered that 
the New Testament was full of symbolism, that it was full of, it was just totally opposite of what he'd been taught all his life. And instead of embracing it, instead of letting those two hemispheres sink together and become the mystic that I think he should, because I want him to be, you know, which is probably wrong too, you know, but he stuck to the, his early teachings. He moved away from it. Now the conscious mind is projective and expansive. That's what it does. And the subconscious mind is receptive and contractive. These are the two worlds we walk between. It's part of the higher mystery. Magic and mysticism happens in the middle where we can embrace both worlds. So if you could, you know, those diagrams we did in school where you would draw two circles and you would draw another circle and you'd put them together and you had the, I guess the Vesica Pisces. And I can't think of the name of those diagrams. It was a Venn diagram or something like that. And you would, you know, you could put left brain stuff, logical stuff, right brain stuff. That area in the middle, that's where a lot of our wisdom teachings come from. That's where the secret symbols of Christmas come from. And all of these things that we talk about, Ryan Gable talks about on his show quite a bit. Magic and mysticism happens in the middle. And somewhere along the way, we lost our faith. We were told Santa Claus was real, the tooth fairy, all of these really cool things that we believed in when we was a kid, and life was full of, uh, you know, sugar plums and fairies, right? Well, I mean, when you didn't know what the future holds, you were full of it. You lived as like the heart of a child, like the scriptures talk about. You didn't have to know the scientific fact of everything. But as you got older, you learned that Santa Claus wasn't real. Neither was the Tooth Fairy, Peter Pan, and all this other stuff. And life got duller and more disappointing. Life started losing its magic. And slowly, your faith went away. Now, I'm not preaching at you. I'm a mystic, so I'm not trying to, this isn't church. But I'm thinking that somewhere along the way, we had the heart of a child and we lost these things. Now, I can give you an example how certain magic works when you use scripture and incantations and symbols and smells and colors, all of these different things, right? Once you perform the magic, once you do your ritual or meditation or you use the symbols that you want to do, you're, you're, using the right side of your brain. So before you do, you set out on a manifestation, you can actually write it down and spelling, this is what I want to manifest in my life or somebody else's life. Hopefully you're not just doing everything for yourself, but maybe some of you are. And then you amplify that, tapping into the right side of the brain with the illogical stuff, scripture, religion, emotions, visualizations and if you do these things if you really learn to do this stuff you don't have to dress up in a robe and draw a circle you could just do this stuff on your own right if you do these things things will happen in your life i promise you it it really depends on your upbringing and what you believe but if you learn to use that that magic that you had when you was a kid the things you learned whether you're buddhist or christian you can take those things and use them as tools and we're going to talk about why they work even though they don't make sense This is why I still, to this day, study Christian symbolism, and I still talk about Jesus and the Essenes, and we can get into the debate if the man ever walked, despite what my logical mind keeps telling me, because I know there's a war going on in my head all the time, and some of you have heard it, but both of these are valid. This is what I'm I'm trying to say. Both science and religion are valid things. They're two sides of the same coin. Uh, and if you listen to the show we had last night, it was a flashback. It was only, I think it was like a year ago or less than a year ago. We had Nineveh Shadrach on who, which was a magician that practiced in the East and he summoned Jen and he used scripture. He even talked about scripture and I'm, and most people think, well, why is he using scripture? It's logical. It doesn't make sense. Well, it happens, right? It, it brought things into manifestation for him. But also, you also got to hear me stumbling about, right? Because a year ago, I didn't, I had a lot of questions and I was too afraid to ask him. I was um, almost not very confident to speak what was on my mind. So I would say something, then I would try to 
back, you know, back up and keep backing up. And I was thinking, good God, this is hard to listen to. But when Nineveh finally came on and started talking, everything was cool. Everything was great. And I learned a lot from him. I'd like to get him back on the show. But yeah, this is why we still talk about these things. Just like Richard Allen Miller, who was on, who talks about the things in our life are actually living metaphors of a higher truth. So when we say like the word is alive, we're not talking about words on a book. Word just goes back to, you know, gnosis. I mean, sorry, it goes back to symbols. But these symbols are alive. And we can speak and put energy into these things and focus. This is the things that Jason Quit and I discuss. Uh, Ryan Gable had me watch a movie by Orson Welles called Black Magic. It was really cool. It was a movie that was about uh, Cagliostro and uh, the Count Cagliostro. And he would use hypnotism. And he would use what he understood in psychology and hypnotism to dive into people's mind and control them, right? Now, this stuff gets real scary as we dive into it because you begin to see just how we are affected in everyday life by our senses and what it and what it does to us and how we're constantly being influenced in our world. But the wise men, wizards, wise men, they know. They walk between two worlds all the time. They overcome this polarity. It's a constant battle every day. But it also becomes a very lonely path. I, you guys remember the the thing that we talk about a lot, that old Chick-fil-A thing. You remember that, Dan, when they came out and s- said, we're against homosexuality, right? Yeah. Wow. Everybody started just killing each other. Now, I'm, this, there's a bigger story to this. But in the end, who made most of the money? Chick-fil-A. But you see this stuff that's happening. Black magic what I call black magic is used against you every day. The political media, sports, celebrities, TV shows, corporate logos, clothing lines. The list goes on and on. Politics, for God's sake. We're inundated with this stuff every day. And now they've put machines in front of us every day to make sure that we're inundated with it. But why the Christ story? Why do I still believe it? That's what we're going to talk about. And, um, I wanted to bring some uh, quotes in here from a book from Manly P. Hall so we can discuss some of these things because it's important to keep a curious nature. It's important not to jump on stories that are being fed to you because you have an aha moment. For example, somebody may teach you something that you never knew, right? You've never learned before in your entire life, and you learn this esoteric and occult fundamental principle And you become full of excitement because now you're starting to understand things. And then you have this aha moment. And instead of keeping on that path, what will happen is that some people will just follow that person from here on out. Now that's my teacher. And that's a dangerous thing. It's a dangerous thing in in the uh, esoteric world. I believe it's a dangerous thing in uh, ufology. Right now, the Bob Lazar story is back. And Jeremy Corbell, I believe, regardless of what others believe, is doing his best to get this story into the news. Whether it's for his own purpose or not, the cause and effect of what he's doing is trying to get the masses that don't even think about ufology, that would never consider it, to show them that it's there, that it's real. But yet, you know, we still got to be careful. I don't know why I started thinking about all this stuff. I really don't. Maybe Dan, maybe Dan, it's because watching my, at home, you know, watching my grandmother. Right. Exactly. Cause what was going on was hitting home with you and you had always had questions about, and you, you've spoken about this many a time about wondering what's goes on after, after death and stuff like that. And your interest in that story that I had when I, when yeah. I wound up, uh, when I wound up in the void. When you went to the and, dark uh, place. Yeah, yeah. So, 
You know, it was funny because you were talking about, you know, we, the child and stuff like that. And, and then even in Corinthians, it stopped and it said, when I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of the childhood behind me. Mm-hmm. That's the NIV version. But, um, <laughs> yeah. you know, so even then, so even in the in the book itself, you know, in the scripture itself, it's already trying to remove your your – as a child, you know, to right. your, your your path to, to your path to heaven is, is being squandered. You know, it's being uh, put away. It was like, why? Why would you why would you want to do that? You know, the, the imaginative forces are, are very important when it comes to faith. The imaginative forces are, are very important when it comes to hope. The imaginative forces are, are what help you solve problems in the abstract ma- in an abstract manner coming from a, a place that is not in the same vein as the problem that you're dealing with is imaginative you know so when you're trying to get into this and that that's a that's from Einstein you know you can't solve a problem from the same perspective as the problem you have to go outside the box yeah and that takes imaginative forces yeah yeah, so and and it's it's important, you know. It's important when if you do any astral travel and you run into all these things and you have these questions, but you hear a lot of these people to keep a journal, right? Keep a journal, keep a journal. And God, nobody wants to do that, but it's so important because I think that each path that we go down is a path back to ourselves. It's is just as unique as we are. There's no, I don't think there's a set fundamental understanding to a lot of these things now anymore, but um. Of course, I could be wrong about that, but watching my grandmother in that hospital bed, we've all been there, you know, you got somebody you love in the hospital bed and, you know, she can't talk. And I'm thinking, man, I can't, I don't know what she wants. Like she's kind of squirming. They've got her strapped down. So she can't really, I can tell she wanted to scoot herself up. And all I could think about was, what is she going through? I just want to help her, you know. And I my Aunt Janice is there, and she's I know she's thinking the same thing. And there's eight doctors, and they're all doing their jobs on the specific science that they took in school that they understand way more than everybody else. And so it makes you feel good. You see this big panel of doctors, you know, helping somebody you love, but yet that big question is, like, are they going to be okay? You don't get an answer. Right. You don't get an answer to that. And that kind of scares you. And so this is where I also I believe that faith comes in. Uh, just the uh, I think it was yesterday or the day before a woman's tumor uh, is gone and like it's just gone. And all the doctors, no matter all of the science that they did, it was a brain tumor. It's in it like its worst stages. They did a little radiation, but they wouldn't kill the tumor. And this thing just disappeared. And they're, you know, they're talking about their faith and things like that. You talk about faith to a doctor in a hospital. They're not going to, they may not agree with you, but they kind of know that it helps. And they always tell you, yeah, that's a good thing. You know, keep doing that because all of these things happen in these hospitals that we can't understand. I'm sure some of you have seen that. And my dad used to tell me when I'd ask him about death, he'd say, son, when it's your time to go, it's your time to go. Now, I remember that used to scare the hell out of me. You mean we can't control it? No. What, we can't stop it? No. When it's your time to go, it's your time to go. Don't worry about it. I kind of think he's right. Don't you? Uh, <laughs> I think it's, I, think I, he's, I mean, look so. at you. You're a living story of it. How long did they tell you you were going to live? Three months. How long have you been alive since they told you that? Three years. How did that happen? Neither one of them wanted me. (laughs) Well, their science can only go so far, man. There's a will inside you. And we'll talk about that, too. we got to take our first break, but we'll talk about the, the magical will that I know the Rev here has. We all have it. We're not nobody special. You all have this stuff inside of you. And, um... Another reason why, another thing I wanted to bring up here in just a little bit is why we stay in question mode in this show a lot. It's 
not that we're never going to get answers, but it's important that we ask questions instead of making statements to you guys. But I'm Joe Roop. This is Lighting the Void. We'll be right back after these important messages. Don't forget to follow, like, and subscribe. Everything is Lighting the Void. YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. Help us out. Follow us. We'll be right back. This is very important information. What's to be said about CBD? AncientLifeOil.com Our CBD is made from hemp and has .003 THC, which means this wonderful product won't get you high. No matter what amount you take. What does CBD do for the body? My hands are tied. But you can Google CBD benefits and be astounded. When you're finished reading, you'll want to log on to AncientLifeOil.com That's AncientLifeOil.com and purchase. Life is good when you feel good. People are tired of pain. People are asking for non-GMO organic products to help them with, (laughs) you fill in the blank. Legal in 49 states, and again, our CBD is made from hemp. Ancient Life Oil is about helping people one by one by one. If you wonder how good the product is, the CEO takes it every day without miss. AncientLifeOil.com. That's AncientLifeOil.com. Have a great day. Do you want to lose weight but have no idea where to begin? The Fast Start Diet, a three-day weight loss plan, is the answer. Three days of nutritionally balanced, calorie-restricted meals delivered right to your door. No shopping, no measuring, and no cooking. Everything is prepared for you and ready to eat at home or on the go. The Fast Start Diet has all the amazing benefits of intermittent fasting without starving. We've helped thousands of people who have struggled to reach their weight loss goals. Isn't it time we helped you? With the Fast Start Diet, you'll lose weight and feel great. Find us on Amazon or go to FastStartDiet.com and use promo code POWERSAVE to get 10% off your first box. And as a special bonus, we will include our number one rated appetite suppressant spray free with your order. Whatever your diet plans are, start with us at FastStartDiet.com. And use promo code POWERSAVE. So, you love talk radio. Then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on, 24-7, with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online, or on mobile with any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. Hey, it's Grace. Can we talk about something serious for a minute? Your age. Getting old has its perks. But remember, being a few years younger, you know, your hair was thicker, you didn't have so many wrinkles, that extra weight wasn't haunting you, and you just felt better. Well, we can't turn back the clocks and go back 10 or 15 years, but you can start feeling and looking 10 or 15 years younger with Nature's Youth RSF. It's a doctor-formulated daily supplement that helps your body maintain its peak performance and fight the aging process. Imagine sleeping better, looking better, and feeling better. See how Nature's Youth RSF has helped thousands of people just like you at naturesyouth.com. Naturesyouth.com. Imagine how it will feel when your family and friends are asking you what you did to look so good. Your secret will be Nature's Youth RSF. It's time to start looking better and feeling better. Learn more and order your Nature's Youth RSF at naturesyouth.com. That's naturesyouth.com. That's naturesyouth.com. We told you weeknights on the Fringe FM are now even better. And we mean it. Do it live! Where else can you hear the best shows and the best talent? Kick off your evening with our newest host, Alex Exum, live at 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 Eastern. Hang out with me, Joe Roop, on Lighting the Void at 9 Pacific, Midnight Eastern. Ryan Gable expands your mind on the secret teachings at Midnight Pacific, 3 a.m. Eastern. We're bringing the heat every single night. Fire it up. The Fringe FM. To call Joe, pick up the phone, dial 1-800-588-0335, toll free from the United States or Canada. You're listening to Lighting the Void Radio.
Pretty interesting as we're discussing this. This is why I love the audience so much. Dennis just drops a link in here. And we're going to be talking about this. This is kind of a synchronistic event uh, that corporate heads may be using magic. And this article is talking about Twitter CEO did ask this. And you guys got to forgive me. I'm not uh, familiar with these uh, artists, but I think her name is Azalea Banks or something like that for a magical amulet. Um, that there may be some witchcraft going on. So in 2016, she tweeted that the Twitter co-founder, uh, Jack Dorsey, sent her some of his hair so he could make him an amulet for protection. And apparently uh, Banks has a reputation for making outlandish statements on social media, so maybe people didn't believe it. But uh, there's a whole article about this stuff. See, I, I believe these corporate heads are using this magic of course they understand it they talk about it they put it in their music that stuff is kind of uh you've heard that a lot on ryan's show but that's kind of funny that came out that article came out today on vice actually uh looks like today at around four o'clock that they're really thinking that the ceo of twitter is using magic or they're, they're talking about it so that's kind of funny but back uh to our topic of discussion is you know walking between two worlds and I wanted to talk about this kind of uh, up to Christmas. I know that we usually are an interview-based show, but what I'm kind of learning is is I'm always going to have guests on here for you guys, but I'd like to not just spend a month, and I've never really liked doing what other shows do, where they you know they book guests out for a month, and then they find out what to talk about. I'd, I'd rather talk about a subject and then bring on a guest to kind of pepper it or help it out, and I think that's what we're going to do because – some of you have really recommended some great guests in the chat room, but we've been calling each other like void walkers or void lighters trying to come up with a name for us or whatever. And that's kind of cool, but I want the message of the people that listen to this show to stay in curiosity mode, to still be a seeker. But as soon as you jump on a path, like a teaching or a certain specific religion then I think that you've you've locked yourself out. And it's important because I think that the higher knowledge is something much bigger than we don't understand. And I talk about this book a lot, this book that Manly P. Hall wrote called What the Ancient Wisdom Expects from Its Disciples. Now, you got to keep in mind that this guy was an honorary 33rd degree Mason who did not have to go through any of the Masonic degrees because when he presented his knowledge to the Masons, it was far more than what they knew, but it still represented their symbols. And because he was so knowledgeable, someone decided to just, you know, shoot him on up the ladder and at the top. So he would go around. If you guys aren't familiar with him, most of you are and just do lectures and he wrote a lot of books, but this one book really sticks out to me because there's a lot of quotes in here that I think we should take into consideration as we walk between two worlds, as we astral travel, as we try to, perform mystic things and magical things to keep in mind some of these things that he says. And if I'm hoping that we can also as seekers, no matter how smart this guy seems, still be able to look at what he's saying and see if there isn't a little bit of bias here as well. But he says in all things involving the acquirement of knowledge, the ancient wisdom says that first you must purify your own life. Now, this means literally what it says. Until selfishness is removed from the soul of a student, he can never hope to gain any knowledge that will serve him for any purpose more lofty than a mental stimulant. The modern psychological cults overlook this entirely, failing to emphasize any virtue essential for the human nature outside of endless desires for things not normally attainable. Once men died for the truth, but now truth dies at the hands of men. That's pretty powerful, right? So we got to do self-inquisition. When we are performing magic, which I know some of you are, when you're astral traveling, when you're doing telepathy, when you're, you need to, I believe, ask, why am I really doing this? Am I doing this out of curiosity? Am I doing this without fear of retribution or the effect of what's going to happen? Am I doing this to gain some type of power over men? Because this is really going on. It's obvious. 
right? I mean, after Big Bush died, and, you know, I don't want to be disrespectful, but I never really kind of liked the guy. He was the leader of spooks of all spooks. You see, you know, you go to blackvault.com and see all the stuff that the CIA was involved in, and they did it for reasons of power, and it's all esoteric stuff mainly. Mind control, too. <clears throat> but it's something that we don't do enough. And when I say we, I'm talking about me, too. Sometimes I'll I'll lay down at night and say, okay, I'm going to astral travel. But I don't really know why, just because I'm curious and I want to play around. But what if there's more to it than that? You know what I'm saying, Dan? Like, I think we should slow down a little bit and ask why we are doing these things before we do them. What is the effect of what's going to happen? Why am I believing this teaching? Things like that. I know it's not very entertaining, and I know it's not what you get with a lot of other talk shows because they want to tell you what to think. Not all of them, but the majority of them, especially the political ones. But it's good to have uh, self-inquisition. Daniel Joseph taught me that, and I think I need to get him back on the show. But he also says uh, the apostles who died for their faith the Christians who sang in the arena while the lions were turned loose upon them, or who hung coated with tar as living torches in Nero's garden, these fur- furnish vivid demonstrations of how sincere and uh, how full of humility and honesty and devotion that the earlier followers of Christ were. The master, Christ himself, was led up into the mountain by the demons and tempted by a vision of the cities stretched out in the plains below. The ancient initiates were tempted by the things of this world. Buddha, standing beside the crib in which lay his infant son, chose between all things which life held dear and the wandering life of the ascetic. But the great need of humanity filled his soul, and he sacrificed all to his great unselfish love. Again and again, students are tempted by the voice of the world. And only if they are strong will they gain that wisdom which they seek. The true seeker, but he he says a cultist, and I'm just saying seeker here, wants nothing but wisdom. When Solomon raised his hands to his God, Jehovah spoke from the heavens asking him what he would have. And he answered, God, give me the gift of wisdom. Jehovah asked him if there were no, no other things he desired, but Solomon answered, no, only wisdom. And God told Solomon that because he had asked only for wisdom, that all other things should be added unto him, and that from this day to the end of the world, there would never be another king so rich, so great, or so blessed. Now, mainly P. Hall states right here that these are facts well worthy of consideration in the light of modern psychology. Well, here's what I would say to that, and I need your feedback on this, Dan. I'm not so sure Solomon actually existed, though that's a metaphorical story. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you really dig into this, doesn't it seem like the guy was, doesn't mean he wasn't, well, there's just no evidence of him ever being real. So here we are. Do we go with the scientific facts or do we understand the metaphor? Well, it's also possible that it's pre deluge. Mm hmm. Yeah. You know, so. Well, these cats know, right? Of, yeah. So I think it's all about being careful who you follow. I can't stress this enough. It's your personal journey. Be careful who you follow, especially if you have to pay for it, right? If you're being sold wisdom that you have to pay for. Now, I want to be real clear about this. I'm not talking about Masonic dues or somebody that's running a website that's charging you a small fee, you know, so they can have run their website, but when, and I'm not here to teach anything either. These are other people's teachings. What I'm talking about is when you're being upsold something, right? You guys know what I'm talking about. You pay the $20 fee and you pay that and now you're in. And, but if you really want to, you know, to learn the secret, secret teaching so you can get stuff even faster, then you're going to, you know, join our black belt group. And that's thousand dollars. It's not that they're not teaching anything. It's just that you're being sold was a pyramid schemes and everybody laughs and says that they figured that out, but they haven't. They're still doing it now. They're just doing it backwards. They're doing it through content marketing and you don't see it. The manly goes on, right? As we listen to the words of the modern exponent of things divine, we see them making converts by offering to the ignorant, the very things by which the ancient masters were tempted by the demons of the air again and again, 
The new cult leader promises his disciples the cities of the plains. His credulous followers fall over each other to the study at his feet and learn how, check this out, through magnetic personalities or mental gymnastics, they can acquire the earthly possessions which he promises them. Remember that part, right? Magnetic personalities or mental gymnastics so you can acquire the earthly possessions which you want. The crime does not lie in the desiring of the things of this world, for to a certain degree they are both necessary and good. Man would not be placed in his present environment unless he were expected to study and benefit by his experience. The great crime lies in claiming that these perverted doctrines to be spiritually inspired and representing God's chief desire to make people financially independent. Oh boy. What does that make you think of? You know what it makes me think of? (laughs) Those big churches, right? The ones that have, what was that one, uh, what was his name, man? He had like an airport. Yeah, Olstein's one of them too. But another one had an airport. And he was telling his followers (laughs) that God wanted him to have a bigger plane. Oh, what is that guy's name? I can't think of his name. But he always wore suits, slick back hair, stuff like that. But yeah, you. Tammy F- uh, Baker, the Bakers? Nah, uh, someone will tell me in the chat room or call in. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah, on the yeah, tip yeah. of my tongue. Um, and I remember my grandfather used to, wa- <laughs> used to watch him on TV. But you, it doesn't mean that these things aren't real, but they're using these things for financial independence and that that's okay. This is where things get a little tricky. When is it okay to use these things for money? Or when is it okay to use these things to become super, super rich? You know, churches, buildings with jets. I'm talking about G5s and people selling you stories for gold and your God wants you to have a G5 and all this stuff. That's pretty crazy. But you got to understand this happens on another level too in the paranormal and esoteric communities. So Manly goes on. Compare the initiates of days gone by, fighting a people who could not understand, struggling with idolatry and superstition and seeking to mold out of these things a truer and nobler concept of life, wandering day after day over the blistering sands like Moses in the wilderness. Compare those masterminds with the self-termed masterminds of today and then ask yourself if you should follow them. The human race has never desired that which was best for it. But like a child, it reaches out to its hands and cries for the moon. Today, the race does not know what is good for it. And individuals, instead of seeking to unfold their constitutions symmetrically, have gone mad over a system of philosophical hocus-pocus, which promises something for nothing in exchange for divine wisdom for a moderate fee. See, I like to think that right here, Manly is pissed off at this point. Because he was a real seeker of truth. You know, he was more of a philosopher. And he's starting to see all of these systems and teachers come out and sell all this stuff. And he would look at it just kind of like you and I do. We'd look at things and say, oh, there's some truth to that. But why are they, you know, why are they making so much money? And why do they have this other thing? And these are the questions that we got to ask ourselves. And this is, this is tough, right? Because we... We want to follow our dreams and we want to make money doing what we love, which I believe is 100% okay. But at what point does it become bad to use esoteric and occult teachings or the selling of these teachings, whether it be occult, esoteric, magic, ufology, uh, blue chicken, uh, whatever, blue chicken communication. I think that's kind of on its way out. I kind of learned this trick that my cousin taught me because I screwed up and he showed me I screwed up one day that, that, and I won't go into that story, but when we ask why we're doing something, I think once we get the answer, we need to keep asking why we'll talk about the trick. <laughs> you want me to, you started it. <laughs> well, I, I think it's, it's kind of boring, but it was like a big aha moment for me and it's very stupid. Okay. But 
my cousin, the one that was on the show who's in the military I talk about all the time, he came down, and I love to go shoot pool with the guy. I love it. I love to hang out with him. Everybody's got one of their favorites in the family, and I'm sorry to my family, but he's my favorite. And, uh, you know, we pulled up to this place with a river market. Now, everybody's got these things in their own town. It's just a strip of bars and stuff by the river where everybody goes and hangs out. And I said, look, I don't want to go in here and try to pick up on chicks and then end up at some other place and then some other place and it's 5 o'clock in the morning and whatever, you know. I just want to go in here, shoot some pool, and have some beer and leave. No, I was serious, right? And he he was leaned out to open the door as I was saying this, and then he shut the door to the truck. And he looked at me and he said, I never said that. And I said, I know you didn't say it. And he goes, but you think that's what I'm going to do? And this is, this is, I told you it was stupid, but he goes, but you think that's what I'm going to do? I said, no. And he said, really? You don't think that's what I'm going to do? Then why would you even say that? Right. And I had to back up and go, well, I said that because it's not what I want to do. He goes, yeah, sure. But if you were just here, then you wouldn't need to say it, would you? But I'm here. So I literally, I was so dumbfounded at this moment. I I had no awareness of how. I guess uh, how much of an asshole I was being, I guess you could say. I really thought that I was just saying it. But as I asked it, I started digging it. Yeah, yeah, man, I started digging into my subconscious. And I was like, yeah, so subconsciously I'm thinking that that's what's going to happen and saying that he's going to be the cause of it. So I got it, right? And so there's your story. It's not that great. That's why I didn't want to tell it. You know, that's the thing, though. People have epiphanies and they have aha moments and stuff like that. And a lot of the times the thing that happens that really brings the light out is more like an oh, crap moment than anything else. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, crap. I'm an asshole, right? Well. Yeah. You know, that's when we take a good look at ourselves. You know, it's, it's, you know, that's our nature you know this is how and it's not to say that it's good or bad or or indifferent or anything like that it's just that you know this is because anybody would be guilty of the same thing because of the way everything happened in their life if i was to live your life and i was to have come to that point in time where i was with your cousin or whatever and i would probably have the same thoughts you know as they say there before the grace of god go i you know it's 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 just a given thing now me in my own self at my own time being in that situation might have had different expectations, you know, but I wasn't <laughs> right. I wasn't there. Yeah. I get that. So, you know, it's, you know, everybody has to go through their own, has to go through their own paths, you know? So everybody's, everybody's level of, of enlightening is going to be different based on the amount of work that they choose to be as honest as possible as they with can themselves. with themselves yeah exactly yep. right so yeah kenneth copeland uh, open think podcast thank you that's the guy kenneth copeland when he was approached by the media and said sir what did you, did you tell and they asked it very simple did you tell your followers that god said you needed a new plane <laughs> and he just took off running i don't i don't know if that guy is still on tv or not but uh, yeah. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. And I know we got some texts in here. Give me just a second. Uh, I'm gonna do this. No, so okay. So Manly goes on. Without labor, there is no inspiration, and no one can do our work for us but ourselves. The the ancient wisdom, many years of purification and preparation before the adepts were willing. Let's see. The ancient wisdom demanded. Excuse me. Many years of purification and preparation before the adepts were willing to instruct in even the simplest of things. Many modern occultists and truth seekers are gladly teaching Pythagorean mathematics and numerology, and if you come every afternoon for a week, you'll be greatly amazed how little you will discover. They wonder why it is that many of the keys of the Pythagorean mysteries have been lost to the world. The answer is simple. Pythagoras never instructed his disciples in any of his philosophical concepts until after they had passed through five years of the strictest discipline. Among other things, one provision being that during the entire time they were not to speak a word, in order that afterwards they might know how to hold their tongues. We would have much less trouble if our psychologists refrained from speaking for the first five years. 
for most of them are preaching with no more foundation for their eloquence than two weeks study with someone no better informed than themselves. That's a scary thought. How many of us are in therapy well, right now? <laughs> Pythagoras was also an elitist. And yeah, he so that this most is, humans were below him. Right. So this is one of those things where I don't I'm not necessarily I understand the labor of initiation. I do. And I don't think people are doing that the way it used to be done. But this is one of those things where Manly and I kind of disagree on. I think you do a little bit too, right? Like how can he know how can he really understand Pythagoras? He didn't know the guy. Yeah. But many authors of knowledge and magic and and in ancient Egypt teachings talk about this, about the true initiation didn't happen in one lifetime. It happened in several lifetimes, and it was something that was more sacred than it is today. But it's something that you're being taught now and, and being sold. Again, if somebody, I, there's a happy medium here. If somebody comes to you and they want five bucks or something to run their website, and they've got like I would say hundreds of dollars of information on their website. That's probably worth it. And they probably just need the money to run what they have. I don't mind doing that. It's when the upsells start happening. That's when I get worried. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? When that, that's they, why they sell it to you for so cheap. It's a dollar, but it's twenty five dollars for shipping. But you know, after you after you put in your card and everything like that, now the phone calls come. Yeah. Well, now that you got this, we also have this. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't you like that? Wouldn't your wife look great in these? Skip. A little coffee there, but when or when the when the down sales start happening, when you hit X, and they go, wait, where are you going? Right? If you stay here, we'll, we'll sell it for five dollars left. We didn't get you on the ten, but maybe we can get you on the five. And I'm thinking, you bastards, you know, why didn't you sell it to me for that beginning? Because you learned a trick. That's all there Lost is to Peter. it. You know. And Manly goes on. There is only one series of true occult exercises in the world, namely esoteric exercises. Every nation has adopted these exercises with certain modifications to meet the needs of race, color, and organic qualities. The Christians took theirs from the Jews, the Jews from the Egyptians, the Egyptians from the Brahmins, and so an ad infinium, infinitum. Excuse me. But when Buddha gave his faith to India... He merely gave a doctrine for the consideration of the common people. For being a Brahmin himself, he followed the Brahmin culture of esoteric exercises. The so-called occult exercises are those formulas given by word of mouth by the initiates to their disciples under the pledge of absolute secrecy in order that these disciples may use the exercises and spiritualizing, etherizing, and purifying their bodies. One of the most reprehensible crimes perpetuated today is the teaching by present-day occultists of crazy homicidal and suicidal practices under the guise of esoteric instructions. Tell me if that don't freak you out a little bit. If followed persistently, these practices will result in the death of those who attempt to follow them. The redeeming feature is that an average Western mind is incapable of concentrating long enough or consistently enough upon anything to be seriously harmed. All the esoteric instructions in the hands of unqualified people today are the result of treason and broken vows among the lower degrees of initiates. In order to receive them from such sources, the recipient must become a party to the crime. Not only this, but when the student permits himself to listen to instructions gained falsely, he nullifies any good which he might otherwise gain. Having obtained these instructions without necessary preparation and apprenticeship, Ordered by the great school, he cannot receive the spiritual insight that he desires. It breaks the hearts of the masters to see the people who know better dabbling with so-called esoteric exercises, gathering in circles to go into the silence, rolling their eyes into the tops of their heads and sitting in darkened rooms hoping to see something. It is not the mere fact that the student does these things which hurts the teachers, It is the fact that the disciples have grown so little in discrimination that it is possible for them to become parties to such absurdities. We do not mean that you will not see things, hear voices, and gain uncertain medium or certain mediumistic powers. We mean that they will be less useful after they have secured these powers than before, for they will have to unlearn again all those things and habits which they learned wisely. Yikes. 
So I got to think when I read this stuff, you were like, yay, let's do magic. Yay, let's travel in the astral realm. Let's do telepathy and talk to everything and everybody. What if that shadow being is a real master? I don't know. Let's go there. Like, it's just, I feel like maybe these teachings are, are something that you should s- slow down and discern about. That's all. A part of us doesn't want to become a victim. We don't want to just go into this thing thinking we know everything. And Dan, I got to tell you, man, that's what scares me about a lot of this stuff is when you talk about these things, whether you're on a radio show or you're on Facebook, how many people out there that got all the answers, right? Don't mm. even t- you know, it's so simple. All you got to do is this, right? And you're thinking, well, you got it figured out, don't you? Maybe I should follow you. No, they don't tell you how to do it. They tell you what to do. Yeah, right. You know yeah. what I mean? They won't tell you exactly, you know, because a lot of times it is simple, but it's not easy. Cynthia Smith says in the speaker chat, all you need to know is on YouTube. You got that right. Everything you need to know <laughs> is on YouTube. <laughs> all the truth. I personally you think I personally think the Vedics were uh, sadistic elitists, bunch of blue nutties. Well, that could be. But, well, look uh, what they were doing. They were making people twist and contort their bodies and roll their heads into the top of their head to, mm-hmm. into the, you know, and making, I'm sure they were just sitting there going, <laughs> look what these monkeys are doing now. Right. Well, we're they, gonna... they're, trying, they're trying to reach the heavens yeah. by twisting themselves up. It is a little crazy, right? We're going to continue this discussion. We've got to take our top of the hour break here. Remember, you guys can always call in the show. The phones are alive and they are working. 1-800-588-0335. You can also text in at 501-777-5631 and contact the show by email at contact at lightingthevoid.com. Stay with us. Okay, nurse, let's get this man to the ER, stat. Right away, doctor. We see this every day. Heart attack or angina pain due to blocked and clogged arteries. Chelation can remove obstructions or blockages from arteries and help avoid painful and expensive surgery. Now there's Angioprim. It's a liquid oral chelation product that you take with juice. You start to feel the results fast. Angioprim increases blood flow all over the body, and that means more energy and strength to take on the day with less aches and pains. 60 years of research has gone into chelation. And Angioprim is the result, a safe and easy way to unblock your veins and arteries from buildup that slow circulation. Paging Dr. Jones, please report to the emergency room right away. Log on now for a special radio offer from Angioprim. That's angioprim.com slash radio, A-N-G-I-O-P-R-I-M, angioprim.com slash radio, or call 877-882-7221. That's 877-882-7221. Magic, the occult history, health, news. These are just a few subjects discussed on my radio broadcast, The Secret Teachings. I offer unique and objective perspectives on new and old subjects alike while welcoming guests and presenting my own research with no filter. Visit my website for more information and to subscribe to my archive at www.thesecretteachings.info and find me on The Fringe FM live Monday through Friday, midnight Pacific, 3 a.m. Eastern on The Fringe FM. Are you intrigued by Paranormal Talk Radio? You'll love the new Paranormal Radio app from TalkStream Live. Hi, this is Sammy. Join us in the Deep South as we're lighting the void with Joe Roop on the Fringe FM. Do you want to lose weight but have no idea where to begin? The Fast Start Diet, a three-day weight loss plan, is the answer. Three days of nutritionally balanced, calorie-restricted meals delivered right to your door. No shopping, no measuring, and no cooking. Everything is prepared for you and ready to eat at home or on the go. The Fast Start Diet has all the amazing benefits of intermittent fasting without starving. We've helped thousands of people who have struggled to reach their weight loss goals. Isn't it time we helped you? With the Fast Start Diet, you'll lose weight 
and feel great. Find us on Amazon or go to FastStartDiet.com and use promo code POWERSAY to get 10% off your first box. And as a special bonus, we will include our number one rated appetite suppressant spray free with your order. Whatever your diet plans are, start with us at FastStartDiet.com and use promo code POWERSAVE. Yo hoy there. Gigi here. And I'm Cortana, and we're going to bring you on a journey through all things paranormal, metaphysical, ufology, and even psychedelic. On our show, Shift Happens, live Fridays at 7 p.m. Pacific, that's 10 p.m. Eastern, on the Fringe FM. And remember, kids, don't feed the Archons. Feed ducks instead. Duck up. Welcome back to Lighting the Void. Sorry about the sound issue we had during the commercial break. Unfortunately, I found out that we do need some a uh, little bit better equipment to keep that from happening. I thought I had that stuff licked, but we have to get a hardware encoder to keep that from happening, so we're working on that too. But I've, I keep an eye on it. So if the, if the encoder stream goes down like that, just keep in mind I can reconnect it really quick so it doesn't do that. So anyways... Now, look, I know you guys don't, uh, some of you don't like hearing, I'm not telling you how to think. I'm just telling you that I believe that when we're walking between two worlds that we need to be a little bit more careful. And these, some of these texts that uh, I found give me good reason to think so. Um, but when he talks about masters, I kind of wonder about that, right? I mean, masters is a whole nother thing. Like, master, I've never liked that damn word. Like, you know, he, he, he master, you know, masters are, if it's a man, he, if he's talking about men, then that's hard for me to accept right off the bat. I don't care how smart somebody is. I have a problem with calling them masters. If he's talking about like higher teachings or higher forces, then maybe could be talking about aliens. I'll let you decide. But he goes on here. He says, and it starts off with the masters of puppets, right? The masters, oh yeah, just wait. The masters are ever waiting to entrust their disciples and students who show desire to receive with that wisdom which the world so sadly needs. If the student desires to go forth and teach, he will be given a work to do. That is, if he will honestly, sincerely, and intelligently prepare himself for his labors. The reason why so many false doctrines are being taught is that people who have an idea do not ask themselves. Is this theory which I have true? Am I living the sort of life that would permit me to receive real truth into my soul? Am I unselfish, open, obedient, humble, and consecrated? Have I developed my mind so that it can think? Have I opened my heart so that it can feel? If I have not, then the thing which I have received is distorted by the glass through which it shines, and all I can give the world is the distorted image a dishonest representation of truth. Have I actually consecrated my life and all that I am unselfish, and all that I am, excuse me, unselfishly and without reservation? Or am I only an intellectual dabbler? Am I a success or a failure in life? Am I surrounded by friends or by enemies of my own making? Am I respected by my community? Do I allow other people to live their own lives, or am I trying to force my beliefs upon all with whom I come in contact. Have I or have I not consciously and beyond all possibility of mental exaggeration received personal instruction from the inner schools? I and I alone know that. The rest of the world except the enlightened few must believe that I, what I say. If I have not received such instructions, am I big enough to admit it and say with respect to my doctrines that they are only my opinions? Or... Am I palming off these opinions as cosmic truths upon no firmer ground than the fact that I believe them? All these questions the student must ask himself, for he alone can answer them. But he is capable of injuring many if he is not, honest in his statements concerning these fundamental truths. If every teacher and student would thus interrogate himself, endless sorrow could be avoided, for he would realize 
that as an un, as an evil tree cannot bring forth good fruit, neither can a sin filled body nor a perverted mind be the channel for the transmission of wisdom. Like begets like. The eccentric individual thinks eccentric thoughts, while the sane mind views all things sanely. Now this question is something that I ask myself every day when people ask me for advice about psychic attacks and all this stuff, and I give them a book because I don't want to be the one. I don't. I give them a book that I read, and then once you form your own opinion, I will tell you that the stuff has worked for me. But I know because we talk about these subjects, and it's cool, but I'm afraid to give any advice on stuff because I don't consider myself a master, expert, or teacher, and authority in anything. And I think we should do this all with all things, including ufology. If you're, a, if you're a, true, a real seeker, you should do that. You shouldn't put yourself in authoritative positions. But I don't know. At some point, you feel responsible for it because, you know, you're behind the mic blabbing and you're asking people to sit around and listen to what you got to say. And I can't do what a lot of people do is validate your beliefs and talk about that stuff. And that's what people want to sit around and talk about or underworlds or, you know, Middle Earth conspiracy and tell you that I believe it's true and then come up with circumstantial evidence so that you believe it and and the the shows never stop. But this, I would say, and Dan, I do want your opinion on this, and I think mainly he's being a little hard. I mean, I don't know anybody that can answer good to all of those questions. Do you? Do you know anybody Well, that's like that? why, you know, I, this is the reason why I said a long time ago that I, I, when I was doing my own show, it was like very upfront um, with the fact that I had I would take great care not to come across as if I'm giving, you know, I'm, 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 I'm saying gospel, you know, as you know, because people will take the word that, you know, you give them and they'll go and they'll run with it and it may not be ready for them or they may not be ready for the information or they may not be even for their experience at all, you know, but I can only come from my own experience you know, even if it, you know, it was something that I followed, but it could only, I can only speak from my own point of view of, or from my own experience. I can't tell you that what worked for me is going to work for you. I can tell you that, you know, this is what I have found from my own self, you know? And so I, I thought very, very hard, you know, especially being, you know, with the title of spiritual warrior today, mm -hmm. I was like, you know, there, there are many paths, and everybody comes from different, you know, different places, you know, and different mindsets and different cultures. And, you know, what works for them may work for them. It, you know, they may have faith in something that you have no faith in, but the, their faith in it and whatever their faith is strong in might work for them. It, it brings them peace. It brings them sanity. It brings them solitude. Who am I to say that? Because it does not work for me that it doesn't that it doesn't work. Well, he's got all of these things where he talks about, you know, um, is this theory which I have true? Well, who the hell knows that, right? Am I living the sort of life that would permit me to receive real truth into my soul? I think most well, people the theory, want to know this, that the question. Theory, you know? That goes by the experience. That's why I always used to say that, you know, that was an experiential thing. If you're, The experience tells you everything. Your experience, whether you, you, you know it or not, should be your learning gauge all, the whole time, you know? And so the everything else is just, you know, take it as a suggestion. You don't have to take it as advice. Just take it as it was, well, it was suggested that this, 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 this happened. Or this, this, and this should be done. You know, so you should take, you know, a certain amount of days for whatever. It's also said that, you know, if you're changing habits. So say if, you know, I, I was going to say a joke earlier and say that, you know, trying to be positive is pretty depressing. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> it is. But, you know, it's, it's kind of, <laughs> but it gets to the point where it's like you got to take a look at it and see how the experience actually works for you. As opposed to seeing whether, you know, it works for anybody else. Because just because it works for anybody else does not necessarily mean that it's going to work for sure. you. Sure. Well, I'm thinking about the Masons here, right? So he's saying, you know, have opened my heart so they can feel. I agree with that. That's a, that's a good thing, right? Have I actually consecrated my life and all that I am? I'm selfishly and without reservation. Or am I only an intellectual dabbler? 
Well, is it wrong that people, you know, become intellectual dabblers? I don't think so. Am I a success or failure in life? Well, compared to who? Compared to what measure? Am I surrounded by friends or or by enemies of my own making? Sometimes enemies are just enemies because they choose to be your enemy. I know this for a fact. And it also depends on where you are. Am I respected by my community? So, so I'm thinking about the Masons here, right? So when I was in the Masonic lodges, this is what they were trying to build, almost like the perfect person that everybody looks They're up to. They're ideals, that everybody, right, yeah, right, 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 right. It's a mold. They're right? ideals. They're not necessarily things that are attainable, but there are things that you seek to improve in your life, if that makes sense. Right, yeah, yeah. So he goes on here, he said, and he's real bent on psychologists, okay? So he says, psychologists today teach how one person may influence another to do things otherwise foreign to his nature. Let each student of the mystery schools be careful, therefore, when he studies with psychologists, that the psychologist does not turn the tables on him. If he teaches you how to gain some advantage over another and twist that individual to your own ends, take care that he does not discover your gullibility and capitalize on you by way of demonstrating the application of his own philosophy. Uh, philosophy. These things work both ways. And if you expect to psychologize others, you must expect to be psychologized in turn. For it is a poor rule that does not work both ways. It is, however, a good rule, which most people are willing to have turned around and applied to them. Psychology has psychologized the public. And like the children of Hamlin Town who followed the Pied Piper... Immature minds have followed false teachings until they have disappeared into the unknown. So it was abused way back then. It sounds like it, yeah. Among the so-called students of truth, we see the fruitage of the delusions from which the world suffers. Sickly, nervous, no longer capable of solving their own problems, they sit around treating each other, waiting like spiritual macabres for something to turn up. These people were once useful, intelligent members of their community. But they are now so involved in mental absurdities that they are useless both to themselves and to society in general. Most of all, they are like gaunt scarecrows who frighten others from the paths of wisdom. I don't know what the hell he's talking about. Like right there, is he talking about like these old? He that doesn't make sense to me. Do you know what he's talking about? Well, he's talking about some old like, dude you know, that knows a lot of stuff but's useless. You know, and he just walks around his living room. Look, Blabbling. No, it's the, it sounds like the spiritual black hole. You know, you're, you're constantly led into a million. <laughs> there's, did you see the the meme that I put up a while back? There's like a million and one books on how to how to fix yourself. You know, yeah. a million. There's a million of them, and there's no wonder how people wind up in these black spiritual holes, trying to find themselves or trying to find some meaning to life or trying to improve themselves and stuff like that because every other one freaking, you know, they'll go from one book to another book to another book to another book. By the time they get to their third book, they're, they're, they're so twisted because each one contradicts the yeah, other. Right. You know, it's, so you're sitting there and you don't know what to believe anymore. And so, yeah, you sit there and you're like wondering what the heck is wrong with you. And I you wonder if that's why some people just start following a certain belief because they get sick of, you know, well, there's a contradiction there. There's, you know, it's just easier to, to follow what works best for them, you know, Yep. but you uh, get tired he, of thinking, right. And yeah, I, I can understand that, but it's, this isn't supposed to be an easy path, right? The void is fast. No, it's folks. not an easy path. It's supposed to be simple, but it's not, it was never easy. It was never easy, and it was always something that you had to understand, that you had to take into account, that it takes you a while to, to develop these practices. It's not a matter of just saying, oh, I just learned a new practice. Well, that's great, but if your practice is also going to be a habit, but your habit's going to take about 30 days for it to start and kick in, in. Yeah. right? And it's going to take 90 days to become you know, second nature. So do you have 90 days you can actually sit there and say, okay, every day I'm going to understand this? Because if you don't, you may as well just not touch it at all. That makes sense. Because, you know what I mean? Because it becomes a part of you. If you're going to dedicate a part, you know, that part of your life, 
then it becomes a part of you. And let me tell you, for for many things, depending on how critical it is into your in your life, without that without that second nature, you could be out the door and be just as bad of a shape as you were before you started, or worse. It seems like you know, Manly is selling this this mystery school, and I'm thinking, but the whole time he's he's shaping something here. But then he makes good points, right? So he talks about, like, the ancient wisdom is sane. It seeks to solve the problems with which we are surrounded today. It is spiritual and reasonable in the highest sense of the word. It is seeking to develop better men and women to meet the problems of future generations. It is based upon the law of cause and effect, which we know is a hermetic law. It has no patented formula, no shortcuts, but builds firmly and solidly the characters of those who unite themselves with its work. It is not led uh, by, I guess, false teachers or by the great minds that have dedicated themselves since the beginning of the world, or it is led by, excuse me, by great minds that have dedicated themselves since the beginning of the world to the uh, promulgation of the sacred truths. It speaks with the experience of eternity, for it has led a thousand nations into being and buried as many uh, to being and buried as many when they turn from its course. The nations of antiquity which still exist are the ones which have preserved its laws, while those that have fallen are the ones that have ignored its commandments. Well, what's, which ones have fallen? They all have fell, haven't they? Is there any nations that from the beginning of time are still there? You know what I'm saying? Oh, you know what I mean? Like India, yeah, maybe? Yeah, yeah. Maybe the East? I know Egypt lasted 3,000 years, that dynasty, so there was, they knew something. Anyways, uh, there's no but greater nothing, honor. They're nothing, they're nothing compared to what they used to be. Right. That's true. There's no greater honor than to be called to the service of the eternal wisdom, which was before the beginning and which will ultimately become the visible exoteric ruling body of the planet. This is something that when Josh Reeves said this, it always freaked me out. But it doesn't mean it's a bad thing, but still, there is no great honor, no greater honor than to be called to the service of this eternal wisdom, which was before the beginning and which will ultimately become the visible exoteric ruling body of the planet. Through the doors of its temples, man passes from the temporal to the eternal, from ignorance to wisdom. It is strong and great, this ancient wisdom. It is the earth moistened with the waters of life in which are planted the seeds of doctrines, faiths, and religions. All these are dependent upon it for nourishment and growth. They blossom forth and are glorified, but the dark and mysterious soil in which they all grow is the ancient wisdom. From it they came, or from it they come, and to it they will return. They are temporal, but it is eternal. So right there he's talking about all the religions according to what he's teaching, came from a higher esoteric wisdom. So there you go. If he's right about that, then we don't need to fight about what we discussed earlier. Think about that. Think about how different all the religions are. They're pretty different, but they all came from a higher wisdom. So we can find an occultist or a seeker. We'll find deep fundamental truths in all these religions. But here's what I, I've come to understand and why I still have a picture of Jesus knocking on the door up here in my studio. It doesn't mean I'm a fundamental Christian. I just understood the message that the highest commandment was treat others as you want to be treated. And love God, whatever you think that God is, with all your mind, heart, and soul. And that's pretty simple, but I don't understand why the hell that's so hard. Because all of us, that all these guys that are doing esoteric things, putting symbols in your face, uh, learning all of these different marketing tricks and stuff, are they treating you the way that you want to be treated, that they would do themselves? When you're being upsold something, are you being convinced to buy a certain product? I don't think you should have to convince anybody. I don't think selling products is bad, but this whole marketing stuff, it does bother me. And everything, like... Uh, we had a guy text in from, I believe it was uh, California, uh, the, one of the last shows, and he said, everything in this world is marketing now. Everything is, and it's it's disgusting. 
Yeah. You know, the whole thing that happened with uh, Corey Good and their marketing team and all that stuff, uh, you know, I don't think it would have raised a red flag if if people would have known that about the whole marketing schemes and coloring books and conferences and all this stuff with certain people at a fundamental uh, that understood, I guess, these fundamental truths started feeling like, okay, what's with all the magic curtains and stuff? Yeah. What's with all the, you know, make sure you go to this conference, buy this book, do this, go to this radio show, you know. Well, the thing is, is that I also think that, you know, marketing isn't inherently bad. It's just that um, people have become, society has become desensitized to actual, you know, um, a good, a good, a good line. (laughs) <laughs> right so so a good ad line should basically just keep you drawing you and keep drawing you and keep drawing you in until it leads you to make the purchase convinces yeah. you yeah. or convinces you to to feel that you need something that you didn't even know existed right so as people became a little bit more sophisticated and more sophisticated the usual the usual lines no longer worked and so people became more like I said, sophisticated uh, themselves. And so, you know, that that's how it became to the point where, let me talk to you about your age. <laughs> Are you fat? <laughs> yeah. Are you fat? Are you tired? You know, I've got the magic pill. But no, I, no. what really bothers me is um, people throw the baby out of the bathwater, too. Let's take David Wilcock, for example, right? When this guy first came on the scene... You know, I looked into a lot of the stuff he was teaching, and it was great. It was. It was cool. It was cool stuff. And then as it progressed, the story had, it seemed like the story had to get more fantastic and fanatical. And I was thinking, yeah, but you know know what, you know, you know what the opinion is? You know what the opinion was for, for that pitch? The opinion for that pitch was always at the end because, you know, he was selling, he's selling you the whole time, right? Well, not so just him, he, like he, other people too, you know. But oh yeah. yeah, other people too. But for as far as David Wilcock was, he would always end it with like you know, and so we're supposed to rise above him. We'll be able to, we'll be able to float. We'll be able to fly. <laughs> right. And st- I'm like, that's gonna take a stretch, and you're going into places that you know that's a that's a pitch, because that ain't gonna happen anytime soon. Let me try. Let me tell you right now. Until we become ethereal, it's not going to happen. Yeah, do you believe we used so, to be ethereal beings before we were like, before this? Personally, yeah, because, yeah. Well, I've witnessed, see, I don't like, I don't want to go down this road and start naming a bunch of names, and I won't, but I've seen this myself, guys. I've went to a place and um, where there were actual paranormal things happening. I witnessed them. And, I, and it was fantastic. But you know, the problem was, of the whole deal, is you couldn't sell it. And if you couldn't sell it, then in the minds of these people, it was useless. And I'm thinking, what are you talking about? You know, I just saw, and one day I'll be able to talk to you guys about this, but I just saw what you told me that I would see. Yeah, but I don't think we can sell it. And I'm thinking, what the, it just didn't hit me at first. And so they started adding things on to the story. You know, Sasquatch, demons, mm. right? And then they would take in all of these other people's opinions and they made a bigger story out of it and a bigger story. And this bothered me because here we had something that was fantastic that was really a paranormal and occult experience that I got to experience myself, witnessed it, and it wasn't good enough. And this is something that I was seeking my whole life, you know, these types of things and experiences we seek our whole life. We want to know that this stuff is real, but it would probably only probably wouldn't sell and you couldn't, you know, make a whole ton of money off of it. I'm thinking, what the hell does that matter? You realize how great this is. But anyways, that's maybe I think that kind of that stuff happens all the time, all the time. I think people have. Real, true paranormal experiences or or occult experiences, spiritual experiences, uh, and they decide that they want to 
sell or pitch what what's happened and share it with others, which is fine. And it's like the four hundred dollar, <laughs> yeah. And they, but they realize it's not good enough, and so they start adding all these things to it that are unnecessary. But uh, anyways, I'll move on here with what Manly says because he's talking about the mystery teachings. And keep in mind that this was a thirty third degree Freemason. He said, the greatest art in all the world is the art of being natural. For that which is natural shall survive. For many ages, religion has been founded upon a false hypothesis. It has sought to fill a world with miracles and unnatural things. It has sought to dictate and dogmatize. For this reason, it is failing. Religion is a body. But today, it is a soulless body. It has not built its tabernacle according to the law It is not serving intelligently and honestly the needs of the human race, but rather is involving itself and its members in endless dissensions of creed, doctrines, and codes, forgetting entirely the spirit of truth. As a result, one of the most important elements of human life is gradually removing itself from the world, and for lack of uh, an honest, intelligent, fair-minded, and progressive religion, we have an age of extreme materialism, when the God of man merely changes from a gilded figure of an unknown God to a gilded coin with distinctly practical uses. The ancient wisdom tells us that there is but one religion and that its seed was planted in the souls of things with the beginning of the world. It became a mighty tree with its roots in heaven and its branches upon earth. Like the sacred banyan of India, as all the branches depended upon one trunk, So all faiths and religions depended upon one source, one light for all that they have been, are, or even shall be. Some branches are large and strong, while others are small and weak. But through all of them courses one life, and that life is light, and that light is the life of men. The ancient wisdom knows neither heathen nor Christian nor pagan. It recognizes only many branches on one tree. Each branch in itself incomplete but each part of the tree of faith the tree asks nothing of the branches other than that they shall be true to the tree and bear true witness of the life coursing through the tree the ancient the ancient wisdom is the life in the tree of faith we do not see the life we see only the leaves and branches which bear witness to the life but in due season the miracle of the tree is accomplished the life of the tree is glorified in the bud and in the flower the life of the tree is consummated in the new fruit of the tree The glory of the life of that tree is in the new seed which bears full witness to the creative power of all that has gone before it. Now this tree is indeed a tree of life, for without the higher and finer sentiments man does not live, he merely exists. If any branch of that tree does not bear fruit, the master tells us that it shall be cut off and cast into the fire. It is the duty of all living things to produce some truly constructive labor as recognition of the divine life which is within them. God is most glorified when his children glorify his spirit within themselves. Hmm. That kind of tells, so if that's true, then that means if you live a life and you're not doing what you were here to do spiritually, I guess, or you're not glorifying the spirit that's within you, then you've wasted your life. But I really don't think that being cast into the fire is true, right? I don't think it is. What do you think about that, Dan? It's a little harsh, isn't it? Like if you're playing your video games your whole life. You play video games 30 years of your life, you're going to be cast off and set to the fire. Well, I think I mean my the other thing is, is that, you know, there's no, there. it's not a universal or a global, let's say global. There's no global disbursement of this kind of information. This is what my argument was with the whole religion aspect. It's like, because there's like, on the one hand, you have people like Edgar Casey saying that not, no soul will be left behind. And on the other hand, you have the religion that says, you know, if you don't do these things, you know, you're going to hell. But half the time, you half half of the world has no... <laughs> has no education in, in any of these in, in any of this information so what is to happen to them yeah, so right and so what's the purpose of perpetuating this 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 narrative if everybody's not going to be able to to yeah. go 
to yeah, have see, the choice. There you go. That's exactly what I was thinking. Because when when he said that, I was like, man, there's a lot of people that don't even care about. They don't this even stuff. know manly yeah, people. Yeah, they, they don't know. care about the ancient wisdom or anything. The secret I do, but they're, so you're telling me they're all done for? You yeah, know what's? Yeah, what's going to happen to them? What? You know? And why is it their fault? Right. Exactly. It's a scary thought. We kind of went over break here. Uh, I'll read some of your texts when we get back. Don't forget that uh, I'm beefing up this newsletter. And when it can, and I, you guys, but he ain't never going to come out with that newsletter. Yes, I am. And I'm beefing it up, and it's going to have some pretty cool stuff in it. All of my recommendations and some of the stuff that I do. And we'll, uh, we'll talk about that towards the end of the program. But we'll be right back. I'm Joe Roop. This is Lighting the Void. We're live on KTLK Digital Broadcasting, the Fringe FM. We're here all night, folks. Even after this show, The Secret Teachings with Brian Gable is coming on. We'll be right back. The truth is out there. There's something out here. And so are we. KTOK Digital Broadcasting, The Fringe FM. All right, everyone, this is Justin from the UK. Excuse the chitty chitty. If you're into the fringe and you want to hear the brass tacks, my old China plate, Joe Roop, and his guests on Light in the Void will open your mince pies. You need to shut your northern self and use your 10 speed gears and listen to them bubble. You could hear a Barry Crocker, no Brussel, but he ain't no holy fryer. Anyway, you be the Barnaby Rudge and take a butcher's. Hey, Fringe FM listeners, did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or no Wi-Fi available, you can still listen to every minute of the Fringe FM by calling 701-719-3971. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. Saves your data plan and no extra cost if you have unlimited minutes. Call 701-719-3971. That's 701-719-3971. Listen to the Fringe FM on any phone, anytime, anywhere are you intrigued by paranormal talk radio you love the new paranormal radio app from talk stream live you'll find a great selection of talk shows covering ufos ghosts strange phenomena and much more download the paranormal radio app now and start listening to the very best in paranormal talk entertainment including the network you're listening to right now the paranormal radio app Free in Google Play and the iOS App Store. The Fringe FM loves hearing from you. Have a suggestion, comment, or question? We're all ears. Email talkback at thefringe.fm. Your home has needs. It needs a healthy, dry environment all year round. Start by getting rid of the worst air in the basement and crawl space, where the problems begin and make the whole house sick. Introducing the new Smart Wave Ventilation Unit. It has advanced technologies to continuously reduce moisture, mold, and odors, and expel radon, gases, and pollutants. And now, wave units include carbon monoxide detection to automatically expel air at a high rate and send you an alert. It also has an app so you can remotely monitor the conditions. Wave is a comprehensive, maintenance-free, affordable solution that will transform your entire home. Protect your home and family with what it needs. Give it a new smart wave ventilation unit. For more information, call 888-717-WAVE. That's 888-717-WAVE. Or go to dryhealthyhome.com. That's dryhealthyhome.com. Wave Home Solutions for a healthy, comfortable home. Greetings, galactic community. This is Suzanne Ross, host of Sci Spy Radio, every Wednesday evening from 5 to 7 p.m. Pacific. Join me for this brand new show featuring a revolutionary new genre, Sci Spy, merging science and spirituality to give us answers to the greatest mysteries of creation. Together, 
scientific discovery and spiritual revelation reveal the truth about who we are, where we came from, why we're here, and where we're going. Tune in to Sci-Spy Radio every Wednesday from 5 to 7 p.m. Pacific and discover the truth for yourself at thefringe.fm. You're listening to Lighting the Void Radio. Follow The Fringe FM on Facebook and Twitter at The Fringe FM. Want to know what's on The Fringe FM? Check out our schedule at thefringe.fm. Lighting the Void. Tonight we're studying uh, the ancient mystery schools and we're talking about between two worlds of science and religion. I'm getting somewhere. We're about to wrap up these Manly P. Hall quotes. So we can tell you, I guess, what the moral of the story of tonight is, for me anyways. I want to say thank you to some of the messages to you guys that I've received. I've received a bunch of messages over the past few days and I can't remember some of your names, but I had one guy tell me that uh, that he loved the show. I think his name was Blondie something on Twitter. And he said, I love the show, man. It reminds me of uh, Coast to Coast, but with more of a creepy vibe. And I was thinking, damn, I guess that's kind of cool. I mean, I never really meant to give off a creepy vibe, but if, if the show gives you a creepy vibe, then that's great. If you like it. But, uh, and someone, I think it was uh, Daryl used the, the speak pipe. And I will, I'll play that uh, probably tomorrow night once I bring it up. But there is a speak pipe on the website where you can, you know, <clears throat> hit the button. It's real easy. You go to lightingthevoid.com. You go down to where it says speak pipe and you hit the button and you can speak into it and give feedback about the show. And even if it's like hate feedback, I'll play it. I don't care. I think I think hate's just as uh, feedback is just as good as any. But um where did we leave off? We were talking about the tree, right? The tree of life, the tree of knowledge, and how it's based in all the religions. Um, but I was telling Dan during the break that the reason why that I'm talking about these things is because when we discuss everything paranormal, occult, scientific, ex- exoteric, you name it, whatever we talk about, I want to do it carefully. I don't want to be that person that is influencing you to go out and do something or practice something or try something. And and you're not being careful about it and something happened. And I have my reasons for that. And I told you guys the story the other night about my friend. And I know it wasn't my fault, you know, that, that she ended up, I guess had a bad psychological experience. But I really don't want that to happen to anybody else. And you can get paralyzed from analysis, I guess, like you were talking about, Dan, analysis paralysis. You can you can go down a dark hole with this stuff and get real crazy trying to figure this stuff out. I think I have once. Has that ever happened to you, Dan? Many times. Where you just get, get overcritical. Yeah. Yeah, you get overcritical. Mm-hmm. And I I don't want to anybody, I just don't want that to happen again. I don't want somebody to call me and say that they tried something and and now the doctors are in there putting needles in their veins trying to calm them down. And I'm not saying that this stuff is going to happen just because you want to astral travel. All I'm saying is, is when it comes to this stuff, just slow down a little bit and ask a few questions and protect yourself. And that's why, you know, I'm bringing up some of this stuff about Manly P. Hall. Now, here's some interesting quotes he talks about here that we've discussed about ancient history, about the ancient history of this planet. He says, in the remote past, the gods walked with men, and while the instructors from the invisible planes of nature 
were still laboring with the infant humanity of this planet. They chose from among the sons of men the wisest and the truest. These they labored with, preparing them to carry on the work of the gods after the spiritual hierarchies themselves had withdrawn into the invisible worlds. With these specially ordained and illuminated sons, they left the keys of their great wisdom, which was the knowledge of good and evil. They ordained these anointed and appointed ones to be priests or mediators between themselves, and that humanity which had not yet developed the eyes which permitted them to gaze into the face of truth and live. Whoa, right? So now he's talking about remote past gods walked with men, and there were instructors from the invisible planes of nature that were laboring with infant humanity on this planet, that they chose men, wise men on this planet, and labored and prepared them to carry out the work and teachings of these ancient gods, aliens, after spiritual hierarchies themselves had withdrawn into the invisible worlds, the spiritual hierarchies of nature, nature spirits, which we've called like elementals, we've got plenty of names for them. And these specially ordained and illuminated sons Left, they left the keys of their wisdom, which was the knowledge of good and evil. Right there is your Adam and Eve story, right there. They ordained these anointed and appointed ones to be priests or mediators between themselves and that humanity which had not yet developed the eyes which permitted them to gaze into the face of truth and live. Now this is what happened according to Manley. Overshadowed by the divine prerogative, these illumined ones found what we know, what we now know as the ancient mysteries. These were the schools of religious truths, religion being here used in its sense of implying only divine wisdom. To these spiritual universities were admitted the most worthy and most capable of the sons of men. At the first, these schools were publicly recognized. Great temples were built to house the priests and serve as chambers of initiation, the pyramids, and other places. The record of the mystical arcane was in the form of carvings, baked clay tablets, and papyrus rolls. Generation after generation was illumined by the wisdom secreted in these sacred repositories. So what happened, right? Manly goes on. Gradually, a separation took place among the schools of the mysteries. The zeal of the priests to spread their doctrines in many cases apparently exceeded their intelligence. As a result, many were allowed to enter the temples before they had really prepared themselves for the wisdom they were to receive. The result was that these untutored minds, slowly gaining positions of authority, became at last incapable of maintaining the institution because they were unable to contact the spiritual powers behind the material enterprise. So the mystery schools vanished. The spiritual hierarchy, served through all generations by a limited number of true and devoted followers, withdrew from the world, while the colossal material organizations, having no longer any contact with their divine source, wandered in circles, daily becoming more involved in the rituals and symbols which they had lost the power of interpreting. An interesting and concrete example of the deterioration of the mystery schools and their rituals is found in the children's Punch and Judy play. For hundreds of years, the frivolous of all Western nations have laughed at the strange antics of these little figures. The world has long forgotten that this play originated among the early Christian mystics, where Punch was Pontius Pilate and Judy was Judas Iscariot. The little club which Punch carries is a degeneration of the ancient scepters, which were carried by Roman de- uh, degenitories in the Holy Land. It is also quite probable that the famous scene between Punch and the baby is taken from the early Christian story of the slaughter of the innocents. But it is really remarkable how down through the ages, by word of mouth, by allegory and symbol, and by natural example, the truths revealed to the ancients have been perpetuated to our own day and yet have ever been concealed from the eyes of the profane. It has been said that the wisdom lies not in seeing things, but in seeing through things. For the occultist, at least, this is doubly true. So there you go. What I'm getting from this is uh, the ancients, they 
they came to teach their things from these invisible worlds and gods, I guess, from other planets or wherever they came from, taught these great initiations and gave them to people that knew what they were doing, that could handle the stuff and divvy it out properly. And certain people, it just happens, because I guess of our own nature, according to Manly, that they got into positions of authority and they became the priest class. The priest class, right? That's what we have today, the priest class, pushing their doctrines on people and then could no longer tap into these spiritual powers and attain visions and do all the stuff. And so now we got a bunch of gobbledygook today. And even in the Christian teachings, uh, Jesus tells people about, uh, what does he call them? Um, scribes and Pharisees, right? That are harbingers of hell. People that push religious doctrine and rules upon you, like your holy Bible, and they hold it up and they say that that's the word of God, and you better follow it, right? And they don't understand the fundamental esoteric ancient wisdom behind it are the ones that are really making the hell on earth that's keeping us from tapping into these things. Now, I can buy that. You buy that, Dan? It's people like you what cause unrest in the world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, do we really understand? That's what I'm trying to say. Do we really understand where religion came from? And in the beginning of the show, we talked about the brain at what sides of the brain, you know, the left side is, is more scientific. It talk like it talks to the science and logic of things, the right side to, to the illogical things. But we're, but we're always walking between two worlds, the illogical things being symbols and esoteric stuff and metaphors, art, you know, feeling emotion. We walk between two worlds every day. We need to learn to live and let our life be a symbol or a metaphor of who we are. You know, in the in the teachings, when they ask whatever God's name was, he always said that I am that I am. But nobody ever really thinks that. I've talked to pastors about that. It's the great I am. And I'm like, yeah, but what does that mean? Why does he call himself I am? What does that really mean? Remember it just what means, I said. Yeah. It just means, I think, you know, every day when you do an act or you, let's say you do something spiteful, then you're saying at that moment, I am spiteful. Everything you do in your life is a metaphor of who you are or who you're becoming. And if we truly get plucked away, then that makes me wonder. I know we're, I know we're going to make mistakes, but maybe we should try not to make them again. I know we should love and have fun and observe the natural cycle of birth and the resurrection as we do during these holidays and the divine union of energies to create life. But if we really want to become wise men or wizards or a walker between worlds and change the planet or influence change, we got to start doing this stuff. Or maybe the world is merely a place of life and experiences where we are farmed by a higher consciousness and plucked when we're ready to move on to higher realms. And the earth just continues its thing, man. The big wheel keeps on turning, as that song says. It continues its cycle of life and destruction. I don't know these things. I just wonder. I just want to ask you guys that when you're seeking truth, whether it's esoteric conspiracy, ufology, to keep in mind the nature of the hemispheres of your own mind and to not stray off the path. And if I do... Help pull me back on. Our time's very short here. This is the stuff I've been thinking about. You you do that when you hang out at hospitals long enough. And we got to make the best of it. For the causes of discovery and experience. That's what I think we're here. To discover who we really are and experience life. So that we can obtain what our heart truly desires. And I'd like to think that that's unconditional love and ultimate truth. Not just, uh, there's some people that'll tell you that it's sex. It's all about sex. There's a lot of occultists teaching that now. That they just, they stop right there. I'm being honest with you. 
And that's, that was, when I heard that, I was like, really? So I've been reading all these books to learn about what the orgasm is? I don't think so. Oh, tantric magic. Yeah, tantric. And that stuff, you know, if you go and that listen. was a little obsessive. Yeah, yeah. And if you go and listen to uh, Amelia's podcast, Love, Sex, and the Hidden, Hidden Agenda, you know, she went to the East to understand some of these energies and, and learn these things and what, what happened uh, is the gurus that were teaching this stuff, some of them weren't great people. So they were teaching great truths about higher energies and stuff, but their their purpose wasn't so great. And now you got this, uh, what's this guy's name, John of God, a uh, guy that's selling crystals and supposedly a real high spiritual teacher. has got like 12, I think it was like 12 different women accusing him of trying to seduce them and all this me too stuff. So when people like uh, some of my listeners come out and they go, look, I, I just don't want to mess with this stuff. And the magic occult, you know, you're playing with the devil and we want to uh, laugh at them. Right. When it was, well, you just don't understand, right. You like, we're better than they are. You just don't understand. Now, maybe they're actually a little smarter and maybe they know that, it's a long damn road, which I don't think they do, but maybe they know it's a long damn crazy road, this path that we're on. But I'm not getting off the train. I just think we need to be a little bit more careful. We're not here very long. And when you go to do things like magic and astral travel or whatever, just ask yourself, why are you doing it? First. So you can figure out your real purpose, your spiritual purpose, why you really want to do that. And if you're not going to hurt anybody, and if it's to discover truth or higher love, and that, that covers a vast thing of, you know, array of things and go for it, you know, but if you're trying to learn this stuff so you can have, you know, a crap more money or influence women or get over on people. And we all have that in us. Don't think you don't. Whoever, there's somebody right now thinking, I'll never do that. You have that in you. Everybody has that inside you. You just got to make a choice. Every day. And what was that verse? Like, you can't serve one master the other or whatever. And see, I don't want to quote verses. I don't think I'm, I don't want to look at myself as a, as a religious person. I just think that there's big fundamental underlying truths of it. Like, take the book of Leviticus where they warn you against a whole bunch of magic and stuff. Some of those guys are writing them books. To me, we're just Pharisees, but you have to remember that uh, it wasn't God that decided what was going to be in those books. It was man. The Holy Bible was decided by a bunch of dudes sitting around going, well, what books can we put together to make sure that they don't kill each other, but we can also get a decent message across? And a lot of books were thrown out. I think it was the uh, Council of Nicaea, and they have a whole Nicene Creed. And I'm talking about the King James Version, Bubba. Yep. And it's going to be a lonely Christmas, man, without my grandmother, Dan. I know that. Yeah, I'm sorry for you, bro. Well, I know the feeling. That's what I was saying earlier about my mom going into dementia and stuff like that. And I was like, yeah, she's all my grandparents are already gone. So she was like the last one. My mom being the last one who's yeah, uh, immediate, immediate family. What do you do? So. That's what I want to ask you, okay? And I mean this, right? So my grandmother, mm-hmm. like I didn't know my mother growing up, not really. So my grandmother stepped in and represented everything of that feminine power and that feminine love. You know, your dad or father figure in your life is always the hard ass or whatever that doesn't really care. You run to your mother, she'll hug you and say everything's okay, you want something to eat, buy you nice clothes. The thing that mothers do, right? That mm. thing they do. When that figure in your life leaves for the last time, I think you got to become that in your own life, right? Like my, my other well, grandmother passed away. Well, there's a process. <laughs> there's my a mother process passed away. you go through. If my grandmother yeah. passes away, and I hope she's still stable, you know, 
but one day she will, right? Then that that representation of that energy is no longer in my life, just like it was. It's no longer in yours. That can't be easy to deal with. Or well, you got to remember, is. at this point in our life, Joe, it's not like they were there every day of our lives, right? So there are there are times that we've gone without them, you know, right next to us and stuff like that. So we were already carrying whatever we had, we were able to get from them, you know, in regards to the feminine energy or whatever you want to call it. So that is pretty much where, you know, if you want to honor that, then honor that by all means. Yeah. You know, if you want to bring it into your life, by all means. I don't believe that the society has any concept of what uh, unconditional love is. I think the drips and drabs that we keep getting from, you know, a meme here and there or a video there, here and there, you know, and, and it's usually like, you know, the, our animals, our pets, <laughs> you know, <laughs> the things that we go psycho all of a sudden and they're like, yo, man, I just want to hug. <laughs> you're like, how the hell could you even want a hug from me? Right. You know, it's like, so, you know, these little, I think we're so far removed from unconditional love that, you know, coming to understand ourselves and, and knowing what is healthy and what is not healthy is 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 paramount in these days to getting to know yourselves. I always been saying this for the longest time. I was like, that's great. You want to go and you want to understand these truths and everything like that. Why don't you get to know yourself? You know, there's a saying, you know, that one of the things that we should we should be trying to do is, you know, every time I have or I'm upset about something, why don't I ask myself, why the hell am I really upset about it? You know? What is it? What is it doing to me? Is it hurting me physically? Is it freaking hurting me emotionally? Is it hurting me, you know, psychologically, you know, or is it just my ego? You know, and if I and I have to be honest with myself and 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 learn what's triggering me and why, especially the why, because if I can overcome the why, then it they won't be able to hurt me no more. But things like that are things that you, I have to come to understand that I have to learn and know and then practice. Well, I got to accept it and own up to it. And then I got to practice, you know, not being that way, you know, because my reactions to it are not healthy. Yeah. And, and that's and that's loving yourself and that's loving yourself and that's not beating up on yourself and that's not being overcritical about yourself. You know, because you're going to wind up doing that to somebody else. Whatever you do to yourself, you're doing to other people. 99% of the times. There's other times, there's other moments that you wind up, you know, you do to others, you treat them differently than you do to yourself. That's a whole different, that's a whole different, <laughs> a whole different thing going on there, which has its own dynamics that you have to work with, you know, and it, Right. It has to do with boundaries and, you know, trust issues and everything like that. Yeah. So, I mean, and then f just normal fears, typical fears that we've gone through because of experiences that we've had in our lives or whatever. You know, there's a lot of things that don't allow us to get close to one another. Why? Because of things that have happened to us in the past. Sure, we're dealing with something that's completely different than the person that we had the experience with but it doesn't mean that those traits are, are now ingrained in us because we've practiced that fear for so long that it's now a part of us and it's unhealthy right why gives words nobody from the, that from the reverend dan lopez no no got you here for a reason that's good that's it <laughs> thanks brother <laughs> we'll be back we're at the top of the hour stick around more lighting the void coming up This is Al. I listen to Lighting the Void because it's interactive radio with good content, interesting guests, and a humble host sharing his journey through the esoteric. Hey, Joe Roop. Thanks for having us along for the ride. Thank you so much. What a delight, believe me. Well, I got a lot of ground to cover. Hi. 
Hi, this is Aaron Hunter, host of Real Paranormal Activity, the podcast where we tell real paranormal experiences of people from around the world. And we also conduct interviews with authors, investigators, psychics, and mediums. Real people, real stories, real fear. Thursdays at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern on The Fringe FM. See you then. Listening to Lighting the Void Radio. Follow the Fringe FM on Facebook and Twitter at the Fringe FM. Start your evenings with the Fringe FM long before those other shows get started. Exclusively live on the Fringe FM, hear the Quantum Hologram Matrix with the Reverend John Polk, Tuesdays at 5 Pacific, 8 Eastern. And our newest show, Sci Spy Radio with Suzanne Ross, Wednesdays at 5 Pacific, 8 Eastern. Then stay up because we're burning the midnight oil well into the morning hour. The truth is out there, and And so are we. Lock it in, the Fringe FM. This is Paranormal News. I'm John Jeter. Here we go again, folks. Yet another encounter with an unidentified aircraft. Fighter jets from a Royal Air Force base scrambled to intercept an unidentified aircraft that was hovering over the East Hull airspace of England. A witness says it was completely still and silent. It had a short body with huge wings and was without a nose or tail. The Ministry of Defense says no action was taken. Either they couldn't find the aircraft, which is a mystery in and of itself. Maybe it camouflaged itself. It could also be one of those ghost planes. The witness on Facebook wrote, By the time we could pull over to video it, it was flying away at some massive speed. A different anomaly in the sky was picked up on radar in the tri-state area of Illinois, Indiana, and Kentucky, and meteorologists are scratching their heads over it. The skies were clear. There was not a storm in sight. Yet several weather stations reported a severe-looking storm on radar on the evening of December 12th. The National Weather Service ruled out a thunderstorm. Reports now seem to indicate that a cloud of chaff is to blame. It's a countermeasure by military aircraft to fool radar by releasing small metal fibers or strands. But could a chaff be tracked for as long as 10 hours, as high as 10,000 feet, and also at ground level? Is the military stepping up its game? And if so, what's that all about, man? Read the news at ParanormalRadio.com. I'm John Jeter, and this is Paranormal News. Poor water quality is a major health issue, and it's only getting worse. Municipalities can't keep up, standards have dropped, and pollutants are increasing. Where does it all end? It ends by keeping the pollutants outside of your home with HydroCare's advanced systems available at Wave Home Solutions. No less than the best purification materials and processes have been developed by HydroCare to provide you with healthy, clean water for drinking, cooking, and showering. HydroCare far surpasses the competition in removing chlorine, odors, iron, lead, chemicals, lime scale, and much more. Don't settle for less when it comes to your water. We'll take care of the toughest water problems for you, whether it's from a city or well source. Satisfaction guaranteed. For more information, call 888-997-WAVE. That's 888-997-WAVE. Or go to bestwater123.com. That's bestwater123.com. Welcome back to Lighting the Void. Apparently Saturn's rings are starting to disappear. This was an article just released today that there's a new study that has a theory that Saturn's rings are likely 100 million years old or younger, not billions of years. But last year, a flyby of NASA's Cassini probe also hinted that Saturn's rings may be young. That belt of Saturn actually stretches 175,000 miles across 
and mostly consist of icy chunks ranging from teeny tiny boulder size to big chunks. But this data that was gathered by the Cassini showed the ring's particles are rather small, perhaps the breeze from a past collision with the planet, and not as primordial as one theorized. But the big story here is the rings are going away. Which is sad, but it'll always have rings. I think it's going to take a long time for that stuff to disappear. A lot they said a hundred million years. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the stuff I'm finding in the news is not even worth talking about. I have to be honest with you. The, the, uh, there was another article where they were talking about the plate tectonics and uh, that the stuff was loosening up, and then you go on to read on it. Oh, it's been doing this for hundreds of millions of years. I'm like, what are you, you guys are just talking about the nature of the planet, right? Science. And so, look, this goes back to the start of the show, that the left side of the brain we're talking about walking between two worlds here. They tend to overanalyze things, so they run out of stories, and they just sit and theorize about stuff. They've been theorizing about space and what this, uh, what dark matter is for how long now? I want to say at least 30 years or more. Oh, it's like that comet that's like several million miles away. Mm-hmm. I didn't even see it. Did you see it? Not the first one. I was For some reason, when I went onto the website, I think... Mary had shared it, but I went to go out to the website and it had, there was some countdown. So I was watching the countdown and all of a sudden the countdown went in reverse. And I'm like, well, <laughs> I refreshed the, the link and it was a link to a YouTube thing. I was like, it never came on. And I was like, you know, you can't see nothing from here because we're cloud cover freaking for nine months out here in uh, Northeastern. So <clears throat> that was the closest we could, we were going to be able to get. And uh, uh, whatever. Yeah. A cat just about knocked everything down. Sorry about that. Why well, don't bring the Didn't cat in the thing. studio? But you you were talking about that before the break, about unconditional love. You remember I used to complain about Leo whining? All, I mean, he just, meh, that's all he does is whine, right? I fed you, yeah. okay? <laughs> I gave you food. I cleaned out your litter box. I gave you fresh water. What do you want? Yeah, you I know, want attention. That's exactly attention. what he wanted. I want to be pet. He I want to be pet. I want, when I, I leave want... the studio, I'll go into the house, and it'll be completely dark, pitch black. Mm-hmm. But I can see, once my eyes start to adjust, I can see the little white fur ball kind of moving around on the floor, and boy, is he whining, right? And he walks right up to me and just starts rubbing me. Wah, right? He's, he's weird. I've never heard a cat sound like this guy. But as soon as I put my hands on him and start petting him and talking to him, telling him how good of a cat he is, it's over. That's all he wants. Yep. And we were talking about that, about the, the, the motherly energy, the love energy. When that goes away, what do you do? Uh, and people are asking in the chat, you know, is your grandmother uh, still alive? Yes, yeah, she's still lo- alive. She's doing... She's in a fight right now, you know. She's on chemo and she's in a fight, and and I uh, I know she's doing her best. She's stable, or oxygen. I mean, all her vitals are stable. They're just trying to figure out how to get whatever infection she has out, <clears throat> which kind of worries me because at first they they said it was uh, something having to do with her kidney. And then we went back yesterday, and they brought up this E. coli thing. And I'm thinking, E. coli. And then me and my grandfather and my dad, we started talking about this lettuce deal. And I'm thinking, well, damn. You know, it's one thing for us to fight it off, but somebody on chemo. And that's another mm-hmm. thing. This chemo stuff, I'm not saying that it's a, it's you shouldn't do it, but sometimes I wonder if it'd just be better to not do it. You know, like my last grandmother died of... um what was it, non-Hodgkins? And uh, she went through a few rounds of chemo, actually. And I'm thinking, I can never get a straight answer. I ask the doc and say, would it be better to let the cancer just take you out slowly? I don't know. If there's any doctors in the chat room or scientists, let me know. But either way, it's hard to talk about because it's personal. But what mm-hmm. I do know is, is <clears throat> talking about it helps. And I think... Uh, what I think about are all the times that when I grew up, my dad didn't celebrate Christmas because he was one of those truth seekers as well. And he found out that 
like I was telling you at the beginning of the show, that Christmas was just not real, Santa wasn't real, and God's no part of a lie, so we're not doing Christmas. Right. So imagine growing up in a house, never doing Christmas. No presents, nothing, and everybody else around you is getting to do all that stuff. Not very fun. But I could always go to Grandma's house. She was doing Christmas. And my dad loved me enough to drop me off there. You know? And she would do everything in her power to make me happy. Everything. And my grandmother wasn't the type of person that, um, like you would think of a grandmother, like an old grandma just moving around, cooking, and talking about the good old days. She wasn't like that, man. She would take me to cool restaurants and w- buy me cool clothes. And I mean, I think we even ate at Hooters one time. Just a cool grandma, you know. When that goes away in your life, or when the threat of it is there for it to go away, and you don't you don't have that. I think what a lot of guys do is they'll date a woman and they'll try to make that woman their mother. I would suggest you not do that. That's a good idea. <laughs> don't well, do that. Don't do the. I put, you got a thermometer, and blah, blah, blah. even if they're trying to take care of you, they feel like that that's what they're supposed to do. But don't lean on your woman as your mother. Please, for the love of God, don't do that. But what I think maybe is. Um, you have to learn to be that person that she was for yourself. And don't let anybody stop you from doing that. I hope that this is not one of those times. You fill that void yourself. Yeah, you fill that void yourself, exactly. I hope that this isn't one of those times where I'm going to have to learn about that. I don't think it will be, honestly. I don't know... But I don't think it will be. I know she's in a fight and she's been in ICU for three or four days now. And I'm sure my family probably hates me for talking about it on the air. But I don't care. Because I know most of my audience cares about me. I know that. I know you guys do. You guys have... You don't want to go into that because I'll start freaking out and crying like a little girl on the air. But... Um, It worries me. I'm sure plenty of them. I'm sure plenty of them are putting out their prayers for you. You know, you know, the one, the coolest thing she ever done for me was when my dad, we all have to face this in our lives. I mean, when our loved ones get hurt or they scare us or we're afraid something bad's going to happen to them. When my father, who's the only other parental figure I have in my life, blood on, you know, that's related to me got in a wreck my grandmother who's in the hospital now well i'll just tell you the story so there's a gas station up the road it's called it's forest tower this whole place is called forest tower that's why i call it forest tower studios but you know how like there's a truck pull in at a gas station right where they turn Mm -hmm. in and they come around and there's a four lane highway well if you're going to pull out and that truck is on the right side you know closest to the gas station and you're facing the highway, and you look left, and that truck is coming to your left, and it's on the inside turning lane, about to pull into the truck, turn in, right? It's pretty close together. Well, my father was sitting out waiting to turn left, and when he looked, all he saw was that truck turning in to the the truck turn in. But what he didn't see was another Dodge that was coming up behind it going about 80 miles an hour. And as dad pulled out, this Dodge went into the left lane just to move around it and just T-boned my dad, crushed his car. You know, my grandmother, I was kind of mad at her because she didn't call me when that happened. She waited until they, they cut the car open, they pulled my father out. And then called me. And a lot of it was because she was inside that car with my dad, who's not really related to her. It's just my dad, you know. Sorry, we had another sound issue. But she was telling him, Terry, you can't get out. You're strapped in this car. You can't get out of the car. And she knows if I would have been there, I would have freaked out, just like I did when I got there. I have to apologize about that sound issue. We still got to get a physical encoder here. We will. We'll get it. But, um... So she calls me after my dad gets into a wreck. And uh, when she calls me, 
she says, son, you better get up here. And I knew it. I could tell about the, the, the sound of her voice. I knew what she was going to say or what she was saying, but she wouldn't say it. I said, what, what happened? You know, that feeling you get down when you know something's bad has happened. You don't oh, have yeah. to, somebody don't have to tell you. And she said, just get up here. So I jumped in my truck. I got, I drove up there as fast as I could locked up my truck right in front of his car. And when I saw his car, man, I thought he was dead. You know, he, there's no way he survived that. When they pulled him out of the car, he didn't know who I was. All he was doing was screaming my back, my back. I've never seen my dad in that kind of pain. It was awful. My grandmother was there the whole time. And she wouldn't let me drive. I tried to follow the ambulance. I was hysterical, freaking out, you know. I'm really close to my dad. Holding my hand. She was there the whole time. She took care of me and him at the same time. When that person like that that you have in your life may not, you, there's a threat that they may not be around anymore. It's, you start to think about things. And I know I could have had a guest on tonight and talked about aliens or whatever, but I, I just wanted to talk about real truth seeking because it made me think about these things. It made me think about life and death and how fast everything goes. I mean, I'm 37 years old. I'm not old, but I'm not really young. And it feels like yesterday I was 18 screwing up. I can't imagine how fast things are for you right now, Dan. And I'm not trying to be shitty or scare you. Excuse my French. It's just, it's freaky, you know? <laughs> freaky, dude. It just moves too quick. There's a lot of times I have to bring myself to a point where it's just like, I got to stay in the moment, Joe. Yeah. I'm with you on that. More meditation, right? If you want to call it such, it's pretty much just keeping it simple. <clears throat> You know, don't go too far ahead. Don't think back. But she was all, she grew up a Christian and she was the first person to admit it. I I wouldn't say these things around my grandfather because he would get upset. But I pulled her to the side one time, Dan, and I said, Grandma, do you really believe in this stuff that you talk about? Because she was like the only one that would sit to me and talk about these mystical things. And you know what, man? She admitted to me. She was like, I used to do that stuff. I used to hang around with, you know, these witches and tarot cards and do all this other stuff. And I said, well, what happened? You know, she didn't really get into the, why she stopped doing it. And she said, then I met, I met your grandpa and I moved on. And she kind of avoided the question a little bit. I said, yeah, but when these things don't add up, when you read them, do you... Believe him. And this is the right side of the brain we're talking here, the faith part, where she kind of opened my eyes about this stuff. She said, you know, son, I don't think about whether it's true and all of the uh, illogical stuff that doesn't make sense in the book. All I know is, is that there's a God up there somewhere that loves me, and I'm that God's daughter. And every time I've prayed, I've prayed in faith, and I can't explain why 90% of the time I got answers and I can't explain all this other stuff, son. And you may be right about some of these things you talk about and you may not be, but I know that if it wasn't for my faith, I wouldn't be where I am right now. And then she gave me that picture that I have right up on the studio with Jesus knocking on the door there. And the more I think about that, that's kind of when I started hearing those. If I think about that right, because I know that was spring, not spring of last year, but the spring of the no year before. No way. That's when you started that's hearing That's when I started hearing knocks. the knocks in my dreams and stuff. That's wild. It was that spring. Who is it? <laughs> yeah, dude, I used to get up. You'd hear it, right? You just... I just jump up out of bed and go oh, and run to the door, open it, and nobody's there. What the hell? <laughs> I got it journaled, you know. All right. 
Man, these this encoder is really pissing me off. So I got to explain the sound issues real quick. So I'm using a software encoder because we haven't got the hardware encoder yet. You guys have really, I can't ask anything of you more when it comes to the studio. You guys have really done your part and pitched in on the studio. But these software encoders are, are expensive. And so Eric and I are say, I mean, hardware encoders. So once we get that, you won't hear no more chippy or chirpy. It doesn't matter how bad the internet gets. That thing keeps some type of steady delay on it to where it always uh, keeps the stream steady. So I apologize about that underwater sound that happens. It doesn't happen every, it's very rare, but I've been fighting that thing ever since the beginning and I finally figured out what it was. Um, but back to the, to the walking between two world stuff. So I was telling you guys that the left side is of the brain is logical, right? It's the scientists. They overanalyze everything. We've been talking about space forever. The dark matter thing that everybody's trying to figure out. Another paper came out today that these astrophysicists, that their best theoretical model that can only explain 5% of the universe, they can explain 5% of the universe. The rest what they call dark matter, they're still trying to figure out. It's They say it's almost entirely invisible. Unknown material dubbed dark energy or dark matter. So even though there's a billion or trillion stars in our observable universe, they're actually extremely rare compared to the rest of the universe. It's very small. And they're looking at the you know infrared from the gravitational effects they're saying, well, dark matter may be an invisible material, but it exerts a gravitational force on surrounding matter that we can measure. So they found something they can quantitatively measure. So it's good that the scientists overanalyze stuff. They learn things, right? But they call these forces they don't understand, like dark energy. It's a repulsive force that makes the universe expand at an accelerating rate. This paper came out where the two halves have always been treated as a separate thing, but this guy's new study, and I, I can't even pronounce his name, so I'm not going to try, but you'll, if you hadn't heard about it already, you probably will, but it was published in astronomy and astrophysics magazines. It suggests that both part, they're both part of the same concept, which is a single unified dark fluid of negative masses. So they may be changing the name of this stuff from dark matter to dark fluid. But everything to them, it's like hypothetical, theoretical, whatever. Negative masses are hypothetical forms, and I can go on and on and on. But when you sit down with these guys, and let's say we had a philosophical discussion between religion and science, they would throw religion entirely out the window because they're super left brain focused. It's not logical. I can't measure it. It doesn't make sense. But I've never and they met. They can't explain the. Power they can't of faith. explain it, right? Yeah, they can't explain miracles. They can't explain mysticism. They and this will if you read uh, Dean Radin's book on magic. I think he's really nailed it down to what I'm talking about. Walking between two worlds here that we need things like religion. I know that sounds crazy because some of you guys think I'm a religion basher, but I'm not. But we need it in the way that it was meant to be in the very beginning of time, which I think mainly P. Hall is trying to tell us about, that it was actually a doorway to hidden wisdom. It was a process of initiation. So that when you read things, they didn't logically make sense. You would ask questions, and therefore you would seek, and you shall find. But instead... Yeah, I don't know if he's talking about... Yeah, I think he's differentiating between religion and organized religion. He was. Whereas an organized religion is pretty much a, a control, and religion in and of itself is the practice where, you know, if you do something religiously, it's like, you know, you do, you're you doing it repetitiously. Yeah. I mean, he was, and he said that in the past, and, and he talks about this stuff as if it's factual, which is kind of hard for me, too, because... How does he know this stuff thousands of years ago, right? How does he know it factually happened? But he talked about how there were certain initiates that were responsible for teaching and being priests, and the priestcraft came in, people that were let in that shouldn't be, and now we have the Vatican, you know, super dogmatic religions, both on the Christian and Muslim side, and even the year 2018 going on 19, we've even got apps to help you find the blasphemers. 
I wish I was joking about that. So when he talks about the human race being truly lost, in a way, I think we truly are lost. You know, we may be technologically advanced, but just like John Anthony West said, our ideas of progress and linear progress are pretty stupid. We believe because there were ancient people that they were primitive and not intelligent and not very spiritual. But in a lot of ways, I think they were advanced. I mean, we we could figure out how to put a terabyte in something the size of a my pinky nail. But we also got the same people building apps to help Muslims find blasphemers. And you know, if it's a jihadist area, what they do to those blasphemers. And just like a what's-his-name Pontius Pilate thing, wash his hands. My hands are clean. I just built the app. I'm not responsible for what they do. Monsters. Modern-day witch trials. You got that right. And like Crow Triple Seven talks about, modern-day witch trials and modern-day book burnings. We're up against our last break here. Hope you're not too sad with the stories I've been telling you, but I I swear to God I'm trying to make a point. Eventually I'll get to it. We're here with the Reverend Dan Lopez. We're in the last part of the show. This is Lighting the Void. Stay with us after these messages. FM. You're listening to Lighting the Void Radio. Who were the real ancient Egyptians? What is it about ancient Egypt that captivates us all? The critically acclaimed series Magical Egypt is back with all new episodes. Let Chance Gardner and company take you on another adventure through Magical Egypt in the new series Magical Egypt 2. Magical Egypt 2 attempts a forensic reconstruction of the science of the ancients through a study of ancient aesthetics. Also, the best researchers and authors in the field like John Anthony West, Graham Hancock, Laird Scranton, Robert Duvall, Lon Duquette, Aaron Cheek, and more join together to explore the topics of the esoteric and the hidden messages of the ancient Egyptians. Just go to MagicalEgypt.com right now and put in the code word FRINGE and get 10% off any download or order, including the groundbreaking original Magical Egypt series, as well as the new episodes in Magical Egypt 2. Also, check out the great work and the companion series at MagicalEgypt.com. Click the banner on the Fringe FM or go to MagicalEgypt.com and use the code word FRINGE and get 10% off your order today while it lasts. All right, everyone. This is Justin from the UK. Excuse the chitty chitty. If you're into the Fringe and you want to hear the brass tacks, me old China plate, Joe Roop, and his guests on Light in the Void will open your mince pies. You need to shut your north and south and use your 10-speed gears and listen to them bubble. You could hear a Barry Crocker, no Brussel, but he ain't no holy friar. Anyway, you be the Barnaby Rudge and take a butcher's. So, you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on, 24-7, with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online, or on mobile with any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. Hello, this is Vance Nesbitt. Take the time to expand your mind by listening to Lighting the Void with Joe Roop right here on The Fringe FM. Follow The Fringe FM on Facebook and Twitter at The Fringe FM. 
Lighting the Void is proud to announce Mind and Magic's Protection and Defense Course for protection from magical and psychic attacks. This is not a joke. Magic practitioners are on the rise, and with that comes attacks from baneful or black magicians that try to harm or hurt others for their own selfish reasons. If you are not a believer in psychic attacks, then this isn't for you. If you are, and you want the power to defend yourself and your family and home, then I highly suggest you grab Freighter Xavier's Protection and Defense course. In this course, you will learn how to tell if you are under attack from a natural source or if an individual is attacking you. The four forms of curses and attacks. How to remove self-imposed curses. The correct way to cleanse your home from negativity or malevolent entities. How to make your own holy water. What you should always keep near or under your bed. Herbs that banish negativity and promote purity. The most powerful banishing rituals on the planet. And for those that seem to want to harm you the most, how to put your enemies in a hell pit of their own making. You can also learn protection against shadow people and other entities. Or are you just in a bad planetary alignment? Even how to get rid of an enemy using a tic-tac box. It does not matter what your faith or belief is, this will work. Click the banner on the website at lightingthevoid.com or go to lightingthevoid.com forward slash Xavier. Want to know what's on the Fringe FM? Check out our schedule at thefringe.fm. sure you guys stay tuned tonight after the show the secret teachings with ryan gable is coming up i gotta tell you bringing ryan gable on the network was probably one of the best things that we've ever done here so i really appreciate ryan and i hope before he breaks it out big that uh that you guys get to hear him on the fringe fm before that happens i'm waiting for the day a big network comes along and takes that fellow away and I hope that that day comes because he deserves it. I learned a lot of this stuff I'm talking to you uh, about from him because Ryan and I will have discussions on some of these things. just like Dan and I do. And uh, I guess it's a way to philosophize about the truth with all the stuff going on. You want to think about these things are fun to study, right? They are. We had a show about Atlantis with a guest uh didn't last very long, but there were some things that I wanted to bring up about this that I didn't get to. And uh, a part of it was the teachings that Manley talked about in this book, the same book. And you can read this entire text. It's called uh, at the archive.org. And if you don't have the money to get the book, it's free. A lot of Manly stuff is free on archive.org. But it is what the ancient wisdom expects from its disciples. But he talks about the Atlantean periods of which Plato dreamed. Uh, the work of the gathering and arranging of the ancient wisdom went on apace for the people of Atlantis were the greatest exponents of concrete thought the world has ever known. I still wonder where they get this information because this was the dreams of Plato. But Manly P. Hall talks about Atlantis as if it was a real thing, right? And he says the Atlanteans never fully understood the wisdom that was theirs, for even in those early times, the gods had withdrawn from the mass of humanity, which means his earlier story about the gods withdrawing was a long, long, long time ago. And these uh, gods, or what the Hebrews call Elohim, which is a plural form of God, right? They spoke to man only through appointed priests and oracles. And the method of communication used by the spiritual powers is faithfully set out by Josephus in his description of the Ark of the Covenant and the priests who served it. But this Ark was also an oracle, and the God spoke to the high priest by means of the language of symbolism. That's the right brain, remember that. Now from the Atlanteans, with their ancient tabernacle mysteries, we have secured nearly all that we know concerning the ancient wisdom and its mystery. So here's a 33rd degree mason talking about that they they secured all of the ancient wisdom. Keep in mind that the government of the United States was built upon Masonic and fraternal ideas. We have secured nearly all that we know concerning the ancient wisdom and its mysteries, according to the sacred book. They were the keepers of the spiritual records which had been given to them by their progenitors. 
the Serpent Kings. Now, that automatically has a negative connotation in a lot of people's minds, right? The Serpent Kings who reigned over the earth. So now he's saying that all of the stuff we just read earlier we're talking about, these, these were Serpent Kings who reigned over the earth. It was these serpent kings who founded the mystery schools, which later appeared as the Egyptian and Brahmin mysteries and other forms of ancient occultism. The serpent was their symbol, for they taught man the use of the creative energy which courses through the nature of his own body as a serpentine line of force. So now we know we're talking about Kundalini. They were the true sons of light, and from them have descended a long line of adepts and initiates duly tried and proven according to the law. These have kept alight the divine truths through many generations of ignorance and thoughtlessness. The later Atlantean world crumbled because it wavered from the law. It forgot that nature was the ruler of all things, and in attempting to survive unnaturally, it was destroyed. Before its disintegration, however, the ancient wisdom passed into the new Aryan world, where from the heart of the lofty Himalayas, its adepts and initiates began the process of building a new people to be the living tabernacles of the gods among men. So, man has not always been a material being. Eternities ago, he was a spiritual creature of radiant and glorious powers. So, that means that all of that stuff we read before happened a long time ago. Atlantis came along. They probably tried a little magic, maybe opened up a portal or something. Everything got destroyed. Maybe the deluge happened. Maybe. I'm not speaking about this as fact, but maybe it did. And now these ancient teachings are coming, or these secret teachings are coming from the Himalayas. I used to wonder, Dan, about that. Like, there still has to be hidden masters up there somewhere. The now I'm not talking about the Dalai Lama. I'm wondering if there's like true Gandalf type monks up there, man, that no, the world has never seen. The Merlins. Yeah, you know, you see movies about this stuff, and like even like Doctor Strange, where they go to these places, and we've got friends that have been on the show that have traveled to these places and learned from people. But I think Jason Quit was one of the only people, besides maybe uh, Amalia, that told me about how he saw true energetic transformation happen in front of him. Daniel Joseph talked about how there were people on the earth right now that all they do is meditate and focus on bringing the planet to a certain place. A Western magician told me that all they do is go into the astral realm and fight negative entities. Now, this stuff sounds really cool to me, right? It does. But if it's a reality, then we're definitely walking between two worlds here. And most of us are stuck. Now, these people I'm talking about, keep in mind, They understand polarity, the left brain, the right brain, and all of these energies, and they're walking between two worlds all the time, living a very lonely, hermetic life, probably. But the rest of the millions of people, we're all screaming about Trump and the the Me Too movement and what's going on in China and nuclear, and all this stuff doesn't matter. So it makes me, I mean, it matters, but it makes me wonder who's really pulling the strings here. And I think you'll find out. I'm not going to sit here and read an entire book to you all night. Even though I I used to listen to radio shows that did that. I'm not going to do it because I don't like the sound of my voice. But he does talk. I'll just give you a hint in this book, what you can get for free. He does talk about how that uh, all of this stuff is being manipulated. Everything from these realms. What does that make you think, Dan? Does that make you think we're truly free? Catalina told me a long time ago, once you really wake up, you're going to realize that you're a slave. (laughs) Yeah, well, you know, there's... um, She she, she could be right, man. There's a couple of ways to interpret this. There's a lot of ways to interpret it. I mean, one of the ways that I used to have, you know... Look, I just wanted to allow my higher power to work through me, right? Because I knew at my point where I was coming from, I really don't know what's best for whatever, 
So I just ask that, you know, my higher power work through me. My, the God the, of my understanding would work through me, would talk through me, would, would, would react for me, you know, because, you know, align my will with his because his ways were better. You know, and he had a lot more experience to, in everything than I than I did. You know, or I couldn't I couldn't uh, handle the things that I was handling, and so mm -hmm. I would ask for you know him have to deal with things that I couldn't deal with in my fear and trembling. You know, I'm like I'm going to trust you with this, you know, and stuff like that. You know, so but and then in the end, it's like you know you know you you're turning over your wife and your will to a power greater than yourself. That means exactly what it says. You're turning your will and your life over to a power greater than yourself, which does it connotate freedom? Possibly. Does it connotate slavery? Possibly. You know, and it's, you know, there's a lot of talk out there about freaking God having, being able to be the force by which is experiencing life through you. That's awesome. That idea I really stick to. I really like that. And I think you it could know, be so true. It could very well be. <laughs> we got some uh, emails here from our uh, other show host, Ryan Gable, who's about to come on. He said, you know, this is a great subject um, in India. The discipline was up to 70 years. So mm -hmm. uh, before then, nothing sacred was essentially shared besides experience that was learned, right? So they had an idea that if a child was placed in a basket and set on a river, that it landed in a certain location, then that child was immediately raised as a master. But this story is identical to Moses in the basket and raised in royalty and also of Osiris and Egyptian mythology encased in a coffin and placed in the Nile by Seth, his evil counterpart. And the coffin ended up in the roots of a tree where he was also raised in a palace after the tree was cut down and placed in the home of the Syrian king. This subject of Manly P. Hall is very invigorating to me, Ryan says. He intelligently addresses the cons. Eliphas Levi wrote about the hysteria many threw themselves into believing that it will enlighten them. This is the New Age movement today. And of course, you know, Ryan's not uh, done there. He says... Uh, he talks about and he goes, this is my favorite quote, ceremonial magic and sorcery. That ceremonial magic is the ancient art of invoking and controlling spirits by a scientific application of a certain formula. A magician enveloped in sanctified vestments and carrying a wand inscribed with hieroglyphic figures could by the power vested in certain words and symbols control the invisible inhabitants of the elements and the astral world. Bingo. While the elaborate ceremonial magic of antiquity was not necessarily evil, there arose from its perversion several false schools of sorcery or black magic. Now, Egypt was a center of learning and the birthplace of many arts and sciences, furnished an ideal environment for transcendental experimentation. Here, the black magicians of Atlantis continued to exercise their superhuman powers until they had completely undermined and corrupted the morals of primitive, the primitive mysteries. By establishing a sacerdotal ca caste, they usurped the position formerly occupied by the initiates and seized the reins of spiritual government. Thus, black magic dictated the state of religion and paralyzed the intellectual and spiritual activities of the individual by demanding his complete and unhesitating acquiescence in the dogma formulated by the priestcraft. The pharaoh became a puppet in the hands of the Scarlet Council, a committee of arc sorcerers elevated to power by the priesthood. Now these sorcerers then began the systematic destruction of all the keys to the ancient wisdom so that none might have the access to the knowledge necessary to reach a depth ship without first becoming one of their order. They mutilated the rituals of the mysteries while professing to preserve them so that even though the neophyte passed through the, degree, the degrees, he could not secure the knowledge to which he was entitled. Idolatry was introduced by encouraging the worship of images, in which, in the beginning, the wise had erected solely just for symbols of study and meditation. False interpretations were given to the emblems and figures of the mysteries, and elaborate theologies were created to confuse the minds of their devotees. 
the masses deprived of their birthright of understanding and groveling in ignorance, eventually became the slaves of the spiritual impostors. Superstition universally prevailed and black magicians completely dominated national affairs, with the result that humanity still suffers from the sophistries of the priestcraft of Atlantis and Egypt. And I believe he's right about that. This is a quote he got from a book, though. But um, I think so, too. I think that's also one of the reasons why they want to keep the inf- the information of Atlantis to themselves, because they know that if they release the information, not so much that, you know, we're going to understand that there is more to us than what we are, but also that that's where the fall of man began. That's where <laughs> that's where the fall of man began is in Atlantis. Because that's when that's when this force, you know, I, I won't say it's like the fall of the angels. It's not the fall of the angels, but that's where the spiritual forces took, went and went and reverted and decided to turn everything into a control scheme. Before it was all about you know nature and the power of taking care of everything and and enhancing the planet and the race as it as it was as. As as human as human beings, both on the on the earth and in the ethereal, you know. But at some point, they decided, you know, some feel that they're more equal than others, you know, and that's where that's where it all began. And so, if there's going to be any other way to reverse this, we have to know that. We have to know that. We have to know how to undo that in order to regain control over what has been done to us today. Now, it does make you wonder just how powerful the dark forces are that are doing this, because Manly P. Hall, to this day, I still wonder where he got this information. I know the Masons did, too. Here's the thing about Manly P. Hall, guys. He got all this, I mean, if you go and look at all this, he got all this information from his travels, what did he meet? Who did he meet when he traveled? How did he learn all this stuff? And then when he went out and spread this knowledge across the world and all of these Masonic lodges, and I don't care what anybody says, he was murdered. Somebody killed him, man, and they did it in a weird, evil way. This is disgusting. How could, I mean, so many people look up to this guy, just like, Think about it. Everybody who's ever came along to move this planet in a good forward motion, right? Whether they were super intelligent and knew a lot of ancient wisdom like this cat. Or if it was a great president has been taken out. So you wonder when I talk about walking between two worlds. I kind of start believing, like, look, if if you're doing this stuff and nobody's there trying to stop you in a big way, then you're you're probably not even close to the truth yet. I gotta I gotta think that I gotta think that whatever is running this dark forces, whatever's behind it, is a lot darker than we think. Manly no. P. Hall was found. Uh, I think they're asking how Manly died. There's it's pretty detailed. Um, the people and, who were there to take care of him were poisoning him. They mm-hmm. were mistreating him in his deathbed, and they were feeding him bad stuff. And you know, they just surrounded him. They they kept him ill. They kept him not only kept him ill, but they continuously made it worse for. Let's put it this way: the ways and means by which they did these things is disgusting, disgusting and perverted. So if it's up to you. You want to learn more? Go look it up. I'll drop but, a link know, in here the about the whole line. story. But yeah, he had that's people taking line. care of him. And, uh, you know, when they found him, he had ants in his body and all kinds of stuff. Like, look, there's the link right there in the Spreaker chat. It's the whole story of Manly P. Hall's death. And, you know, I was paying attention to a show the other day, not to cut you off. But there was somebody who was saying something about uh, Armageddon and what were, where is the Battle of Armageddon going to be fought? And somebody had referred to the Edgar Casey readings and had said that the uh, the fight, the Battle of Armageddon, because we talk about you know powers and principalities and places of power and high places. The the Battle of Armageddon was supposed to be fought in the higher realms 
right. and the higher realms were supposed to be the souls that were coming in and the souls that were leaving. So you start wondering about, you know, the people who are actually helping others who are actually to get somewhere, how are they being, you know, are they being targeted? <laughs> Yeah. So if I, maybe if I'm staring you wrong, so maybe I'll have a long life, right? <laughs> so, well, but if you're stopping, if you're stopping the, if you're stopping the souls from going out to do battle, you know, for humanity or whatever, in the Battle of Armageddon, you know, so it's probably a numbers game. I'm trying to explain it the best way that I can, but I'm I'm still mulling this over. But yeah. you know how. If they're doing the battle there, that doesn't mean that there's no collateral damage. So that if there is actually, you know, schools of thought over here that are actually bringing the battle of Armageddon for the good and the the good and the evil, then those who are trying to bring the good about on here would not be surprisingly attacked. Yeah. So that their message or their 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 understanding to bring forth people who are be able to bring their conscious level and their their way of understanding that they can actually connect with themselves and be in touch with their higher selves so that when after they pass into the other realm that they'll be able to go into battle fully cognizant of what's be, or of what's going on and enduring them to be, enable them to to go into battle with all of that there is because they know themselves. And so they know themselves, they know their higher selves. And so they know their higher selves, they can connect and be stronger than those that are opposing humanity. If that yeah, makes any sense. It does make sense. Totally. And uh, I guess my phones are broke again. I'm looking at my emails here and I've got, what, what am I paying these people for? If the, I'll fix it. I promise. I, it was working. I, te- I test everything before the show starts, but I'm sorry if I missed your phone call. I'm sure it was very good information, but if you can email it to me, I'll read it tomorrow night. I apologize about that, but uh, that really pisses me off. I'm paying these people for a number, and it don't work. You pay for something, you want the result. If I do not get that result, you are fired. What the hell? But, it, yeah, we do got to wrap this up, though, but it's a uh, uh, show tonight. Is The whole topic's been about walking between two ro- worlds, understanding polarity, what it means to be a void walker, a truth seeker. Uh, some of the stuff that you ha- you need to watch out for, and um, and I hope all of you take this to heart because I know it's not probably not going to be the most popular show, but it's very important to me, and uh, I really appreciate all. Of, yeah, it's really kind of deep, and I really appreciate all of you guys' um, thoughts for the family and all of your support. You guys that have supported this month as well, thank you guys so much. You have no idea how much it helps because it's December, right? And um, we're going to continue keep doing this. Keep the prayers this. coming. Please keep the prayers coming. And uh, I want to say also, too, that there are those guests that you guys asked me about. They did respond, and I'm contemplating on some of them want me to do pre-recorded interviews because some of them live in, like, India, and I'll, I'll do that for you guys if you really want them. And, Dan, thank you so much for coming on tonight, man. It's cool. I love these discussions. Always a pleasure. Thank and you. You're very welcome, sir. And do not forget that this show was produced by the Fringe FM and cannot be rebroadcasted or syndicated without written permission. And music was by Chronoaks, Carbon Based Life Forms, Bundy, and Space Station, and Kevin McLeod. We'll see you guys tomorrow night. Up next is The Secret Teachings. Good night. Discretion is advised. We told you weeknights on the Fringe FM are now even better. 
And we mean it. Do it live! Where else can you hear the best shows and the best talent? Kick off your evening with our newest host, Alex Exum, live at 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 Eastern. Hang out with me, Joe Roop, on Lighting the Void at 9 Pacific, Midnight Eastern. Ryan Gable expands your mind on the secret teachings at Midnight Pacific, 3 a.m. Eastern. We're bringing the heat every single night. Fire it up. The Fringe FM. Yahoy there. This is Gigi from Shift Happens. And holy shit, you're listening to KTLK, The Fringe FM. Hey, hey, don't you 